following is a special presentation of ESPN College Football on ABC. You are looking live at Texas Memorial Stadium, where a number one ranked team visits for the first time in 56 years. But this time, it's number one versus number two. It's Saturday Night Football on ABC. It shocked and hurt them. Now it motivates them. The Buckeyes' bitter loss to Texas last year launched the Longhorns towards a national title. Tonight, they meet again. Two proud schools with historic storied football programs. Both teams the embodiment of the states they represent. The values ingrained in their hearts collide on the field. For the first time in 10 years, number one against number two in the regular season, and earlier in the season than ever before. A game with far-reaching implications and deep personal motivations. For one team, reaffirmation. For the other, revenge. For both, a reason to believe the national championship is their destiny. Ohio State and Texas play tonight on Saturday Night Football. ESPN Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines here at Texas Memorial Stadium it's the number one Ohio State Buckeyes versus the number two Texas Longhorns for one year fans of both these schools have waited for the rematch and the game in Columbus last year was a classic we should be so fortunate to have one just like that here tonight in Austin. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger, along with Kirk Herbstreit and Bob Davies. Not a whole lot you can say when you got one versus two, but we'll try. A couple of great stories. And, Kirk, let's start with the Texas quarterback, Colt McCoy. Well, Brent, what a story. Colt McCoy grew up in a small town in Texas. High school coach. His father was a high school coach. He's really waited for this opportunity his whole life. And now it's here. He's going up against the number one team in the country. He has all the physical abilities, the quick arm. He manages the offense, but he's never been in this atmosphere. How will he handle this kind of crowd and this kind of hype? Very, very important for Texas to get him the ball early and to get him to relax and just make a good throw to get his confidence going. And Bob, a year ago, it was the Buckeye defense with the Stars. This year, it's the offense. Well, Brent, it's obvious to me why this Ohio State offense is getting so much attention it's because they have so much talent I think they have two legitimate Heisman Trophy candidates on offense I also think Troy Smith is the most improved quarterback in college football he can make all the throws Ted Ginn's always been a dynamic return man he's now a dynamic receiver this Texas offense is for real absolutely and I think you can both agree the matchup of the quarterbacks is critical and when you think of it which one tonight will experience the thrill of it. ESPN College Football on ABC. This is ESPN on ABC. John Saunders with Craig James and Doug Flutie. A couple of guys who played in big games like the one you'll see tonight. Now, Texas, it seems like it was five minutes ago they won the Rose Bowl in the National Championship. Any advantage because of that? Absolutely. You know it and I know it. You know it. When you've been there and you've been on the big stage, it gives you confidence. You know how to prepare. You're not flustered right before kickoff. It's going to help young Colt McCoy when he takes the field for Texas. However, Troy Smith at Ohio State, he's 6-1 against ranked opponents. The guy has been in the big games himself. 
Maybe not like the Rose Bowl that you're talking about there, but he knows how to take his team on the road to give them success. Ohio State, Michigan doesn't get much bigger than that other than one verse two. And this is his stage, his coming out party. He's going to be excited. I know he's been there before, but he is going to be fired up to play this game. All right. And game played earlier today. The Fighting Irish from Notre Dame trying to look impressive because they weren't last week. The defense got it done today. Tom Zibikowski returns this one 25 yards. You know what? Anthony Morelli at quarterback was supposed to make plays to win the game for Penn State. Not here. Tom Zibikowski delivers the knockout blow. The old boxer does it to him. 41 to 17 was the final in that game. Right now it's time to take you out to Austin, Texas to the game day crew. Let's join Chris Fowler and Lee Corso. John, thank you. A warm evening here in the Burn Orange Nation, but <laughs> Lee, frankly, there are far tougher environments to overcome as a visitor in college football than this one. Those guys talked about Troy Smith's experience. This atmosphere is not going to beat him. Texas will have to beat him. And as for Colt McCoy, maybe a little piece of his predecessor, Vince Young, left behind because this Texas team, those guys mentioned, it does look very calm and very confident. Well, Texas is a very confident football team in this stadium. Why? Well, they've won 16 straight games here. They won 14 straight games when the game started after 5.30. <laughs> and it's now 7.15. And also, they've beaten nine straight ranked teams in this place. So I'm going with that confidence. I'm going with Texas. The Longhorns. All right, Texas. How do you like this helmet, Fowler? I love the props, Lee. Go, Texas. Corso calling for a 22nd consecutive win by the Longhorns. Remember, the loser not out of the national championship chase, but it's only the winner who can control their destiny. Two veteran poised, mature teams ready to go. Kick it upstairs now to Brent Musburger. Brent, take it away. And the Texas Longhorns, the defending national champions, ready to pour out onto the field. Even though they are second behind Ohio State, folks, they are the favorites because they're playing at home. So Texas and the Ohio State Buckeyes are coming up next on ABC. This ESPN production is available on ABC HD, presented by Dish Network. Well, Texas without a couple of players tonight because Mac Brown suspended starting corner Terrell Brown and backup linebacker Tyrell Gatewood after their arrest on misdemeanor marijuana and gun charges earlier in the week. The drug charges against both were dropped yesterday because former linebacker Aaron Harris, who was driving the car, took responsibility. The attorney for Brown says he expects the gun charges to be dropped early next week. Lisa Salters, the fourth member of our team, has more on the story. Lisa? Well, Brent, Terrell Brown's attorney let me speak to his client for a couple of minutes yesterday, and the first thing that Terrell Brown said to me was, I want to apologize to my teammates, to my coaches, to all the Longhorn fans. He said, I feel like I let everyone down. Brown said, I never meant to be a distraction to the team. I'm a good person. He says, I always try to do the right thing, and right now I have to accept my punishment like a man learn from my mistakes and he says I completely understand coach Brown's decision still Brown said it's gonna hurt he said I trained for this one game the entire summer he said it's going to be painful to have to watch it from home Brent right Lisa and uh, Mac Brown made the announcement to the team earlier in the week Jim Trussell of course will probe at the replacement at that corner spot and see what he's got Texas won the toss they have deferred so the Buckeyes will start on offense and the all-purpose kicker for Texas the left-footed Greg Johnson who transferred here from Vanderbilt and the electrifying Ted Ginn is back inside the five-yard line so we will see early what the kickoff strategy will be for the Longhorns. Underway, 
and a booming kick out of the end zone. So here comes Troy Smith, Bob Davey, and uh, what should the folks at home watch tonight with number 10? Well, Brent, I think an improved quarterback. I think early in his career, he trusted his legs more than he trusted his arm. I think the biggest improvement you'll see is he now stands in that pocket and looks to throw first. This guy can make all the throws. Antonio Pittman. He's the deep set running back. They put a fullback blocker, Stan White, in front of him. And from that formation, White leads the way, and Pittman is stopped. And City lineup. So for Troy Smith, you recognize the name of the skill guys, several of the linemen, but note Doug Dadish, the senior from Warren. He was the left tackle last year. He's now moved to center. It means that Alex Boone, only a sophomore on the left side, very impressive in that offensive line here for the Buckeyes. You're going to see a lot of movement here early in this game by Ohio State's offense. Buckeyes coaches feel that Texas is too good to just line up and play. They have to have movement to slow down Texas. Second and seven. Take the handoff. Smith's first pass is complete for the first down. And running in space is Ginn, and he can go. 40, 35, and out of bounds. They caught him in space. And as we take a look at that, Bob Davey, that is the key for the Buckeyes. And the first thing you're going to notice, Troy Smith rolling to his left. Head again on the little inside slant route, and when you give a guy with world-class speed that much open space, you see what happens. The accuracy of the throw there by Troy Smith, enabling Ted again to make the catch in stride and utilize his speed to pick up a big gain for Ohio State. At 46, Kurt, right off the bat, and the Buckeyes threatening. The Buckeyes' offense is matched against the Texas defense, so if you will. Strength against strength because of the quarterback position. First down and 10. And Smith pulls back out. Has time. Fires over the middle. Incomplete. Just a touch shorter. And he might have had Brian Hartline for six. We check now that Texas defense. And, of course, uh, Lisa filled you in on the details of the key story. Veterans up front. And Ryan Palmer, number 29, and he will be working in there. They will substitute Brandon Foster in there along with Palmer. So, in effect, you're going to have both of them trying to replace Terrell Brown here tonight. Second and 10. Pittman on a fine cut. And there was daylight there, Bob Davey, for the first down. And you're going to watch Antonio Pittman. This is a great cutback run. He shows great vision. He gets an excellent block by Rory Nichols, the big tight end. And when I asked Joe Daniels, their offensive quarterback coach, give me one word on Antonio Pittman, he said, tough. Toughness, the power to be able to get in there, and the also great vision. And, Coach, as you said, nice cut back there to see the open hole on the backside. Aaron Ross goes over with Ginn off to Troy Smith's left. But they run that option look with Pittman, and Pittman powers just short of the 15-yard line. You talk about the impact players for Ohio State. It's pretty obvious. We've already seen number 10. We've already seen number 25, and we've seen number 20, number 7. That's a great graphic right there because those are impact guys. A lot of option play action, a couple passes off the option attack from the shotgun. That time a pitch and a big game. Interesting the way they're trying to attack from the option here early. And using the fullback again, Stan White in front of Pittman to try and clear another hole on the right side, but he is snagged and brought down. Roderick Muckleroy, a backup linebacker, number 38, the redshirt freshman, whom they are very impressed with, Kirk. They feel that they have the defensive speed to be able to win the battle up front at the line of scrimmage and attack downhill. That's what's so surprising about this first drive by Ohio State. Mixing up their formations, mixing up their play calling, very, very balanced, and keeping Gene Chizik's defense on their heels here on early in this game. 
And if I'm Texas defense right now, don't let number 10 run with that football on third and four. And Pittman is out now, and they empty it with Maurice Wells. Smith can't find a receiver, dances, and he is down, and he is covered up by the middle linebacker who was spying Rashad Bobino. He's a weak side linebacker a year ago, and 44 keeping an eye on number 10, and it's field goal time for the Buckeyes. And Gene Chizik, Texas defensive coordinator, loves speed over size. That's a tremendous job by Rashad Bobino spying on Troy Smith. Aaron Petrie. Redshirt freshman, this is a 29-yarder. No Nugent, no Houston. So Aaron Petri. The 28-yarder, and no good. So the drive peters out. Wide left. And now Texas will have their first at bat. So when you come back, you'll see the freshman quarterback from Tuscola, Texas. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. He's 6'3", he's 205 pounds, Kurt. Colt McCoy is second star. Well, he is a gym rat. He is a young man who has worked very, very hard for this opportunity as a freshman. Thought about it, dreamed about it. He's about to take his first snap in a big game as a quarterback at Texas. That familiar shotgun that Vince Young used the road to an undefeated season and on first down selvin young he's got a little more dash than a year ago when he came back from major knee surgery and you can see on the first carry of the game colt mccoy from tuscola texas town of about 700 one stoplight downtown and as kirk told me it's always blinking <laughs> When you have a young quarterback like this, it's so important for him to get rid of the butterflies. And a lot of times, it's a quick little throw, get the completion out of the way, and then start to manage the offense. Going without that huddle here just to pick up some rhythm. McCoy keeps it. And Malcolm Jenkins, the corner, makes the stop for the Buckeyes and our city offensive line. So, Colt, you can see you recognize some of the names. You see himself in Lima Swede, had the winning catch, of course. But Justin Blaylock. Has up an opportunity to go to the NFL to come back for his senior season. And Colt is very happy to have the big rascal over there at right tackle. Second and seven. Pass was low, scooped up, and it's going to be incomplete. Wasn't that a one hopper? That was a baseball player making the catch there, Corn Cosby. <laughs> and he took off in, in his old sport. Uh, that was legal. <laughs> and our uh, Buckeye defense here. Uh, fine, fine front four, but the rest of them they've got to replace. And Laurenitis, who started in the middle because of Carpenter's injury in the Fiesta Bowl, he'll have to anchor the linebackers and bring this group along. Now it's third down and seven for Colt. What a wonderful, wonderful name for a Texas quarterback, Colt McCoy. Look at the pull the trigger. Batted away beautifully by James Laurinaitis, the linebacker we told you about, making a big defensive play here for the Bucs. The first thing you're going to see is Vernon Golston, the outside linebacker slash defensive end, gets great pressure. Colt McCoy steps up, and the Texas fans wanted pass interference on number 33, James Laurinaitis, the linebacker, but didn't get it. It's very obvious that Ohio State moving around quite a bit before the snap, hoping to confuse the young quarterback to try to get him to put the ball into coverage. Here comes again. You saw number seven. You can't wait to see what they do with this punt. Johnson hangs it high. Again, drifts back. Got it on the 14, and he's covered up and down at the 10-yard line. Michael Griffin, the twin brother of Marcus, who has worked his way into the starting lineup, comes down on Ted Ginn and makes the stop. When we come back, we'll see the stars who are shining for the Buckeyes, Ted Ginn and Troy Smith.
Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Lincoln, reach higher. And IBM, what makes you special? The beautiful Capitol building here in Austin, the great state of Texas. And Bob Davey, you were a Texas Aggie defensive coordinator. I know you've got some good thoughts. And right after this first play by the Buckeyes, I want to ask you about the crowd in Austin. On a play fake, Smith rolls out to the right. There's Gonzalez, and that'll be a first and ten. Now it's a sellout. It's jam-packed. It was so noisy in Columbus a year ago. Will this disrupt the offense? Well, Brent, this is one of my favorite places to play all across America because it's a great environment. The crowd noise is not a big factor. You notice all that grass behind the end line right there. And really, that's room for Bevo to graze down there, but it allows the crowd noise to escape this stadium. So I don't think it's much of a factor. And the way Ohio State's offense is playing right now, you can see it isn't. And Bebo's upset because Ug is in the red zone. And then, <laughs> if you want to check those rascals out, first down and 10. And Troy Smith puts it back in his hands. Short game this time to the 30. You know, Kirk, as we watch Troy Smith and again, of course, uh, virtually brothers from the uh, Cleveland area, talk about the maturation of Troy Smith. I know you live in Columbus. You've been so close to it. Well, he's, he's become a very confident leader over the course of the last year and a half. I, I think what happened really is the coaches halfway through last season began to become confident in his abilities. They trusted him more, and now he is trusting his own decision-making. So he comes into this atmosphere with this crowd on the road, very similar to the way Vince Young came into Columbus last year. A confident leader who believes in his team's ability to play. Second and seven. And Pittman is stopped in the hole by Marcus Griffin. Hard hitting safety. And let's go to John Saunders in New York. down and seven and we will uh, catch up with John here a little bit later Gene Chiswick the defensive coordinator of Texas 29 straight victories he has been the coordinator for folks he was with an undefeated Auburn prior to coming to Texas last year's undefeated national championship and right now Gonzalez is giving him heartburn uh, Bob Davy number 11 is stepping up as a big time receiver here and I'll tell you what is there any question about Troy Smith's arm strength but he goes to Gonzalez and anytime you get a safety number 27 Michael Griffin is a heck of a football player but they get the safety isolated on Anthony Gonzalez but the arm strength and a great third down conversion right there Kirk interesting to see that time Teddy again used as a decoy to clear out Aaron Ross and vacate a wide open zone well designed play by Ohio State using Teddy again as a decoy to pick up that first down the freshman phenom Chris Wells from Akron Ohio is the tailback here is Chris the number one rated running back coming out of high school Meany is called and Roderick McElroy is getting a lot of action over there at the will linebacker for Texas they expect the Bucks to come running at them and he's a little bit stouter than Drew Kelson who came to that position from safety and one thing you notice Ohio State the ability to mix the spread offense as Kirk mentioned earlier with the power offense Texas an undersized speed first defense the ability to line up an eye backs and run that ball right now for Ohio State Buckeyes drove down and missed a field goal on their opening drive but they are coming right back now in trouble has to throw it away the Texas bench is screaming for grounding but I believe he got it past the line of scrimmage so there'll be no call on that Brian Robinson number 39 was applying pressure and now there is a flag that does come down to number 10 offense still in the 
pocket, no receiver in the area. Spot foul, lost the down, third down. And the point there, Troy Smith was inside the tackle box, still in the pocket. That's yeah. why it was called intentional grounding. Yeah, exactly, uh, Coach. And Bill Lamagne, fine referee from the Big Ten. They got this right. Rick Nelson is his umpire. Keep in mind, you can throw the football away if you are outside the tackle box. Excellent call right there by the officiating crew to correct that call and get it right. As a result, it'll be third down and 14 with Pittman back at running back, and they move him out as an added receiver. Smith with it as long as he could. And then they swarm all over him. Getting back to the original line of scrimmage, Marcus Griffin and Bobino are there again. And the Buckeyes will be forced to punt. And it'll be one of their veterans, A.J. Trapasso, who was their punter a year ago, coming onto the field. In Texas, the last five years in college football has blocked more kicks, Brent and Kirk, than any other school in the NCAA. Got an injured player, as you can see, down on the ground. So while we have that, let's now check in with uh, with John Saunders back in uh, New York. John. Grant, thanks a lot. Time for the Sports Center 30 at 30 update. First news from Notre Dame: the Fighting Irish Brady Quinn had three touchdown passes today as they blast out Penn State. And Roger Federer wins today in the U.S. Open, becoming the first player since '68 to reach six consecutive Grand Slam finals. Brent. Thank you, John. And uh, one of their fine safeties, Marcus Griffin. And Horns and uh, their fans are really happy to see him up and walking off the field. He's a good one. Back deep is Aaron Ross. Bob mentioned blocking punts, but they just lost their best punt blocker, Marcus Griffin, with a record six. Uh, stepped off the field right now, and Capasso will punt it toward Ross. High, booming punt. And the Horns let it go into the end zone for a touchback. It'll come out on the 20-yard line, where again we'll be taking a look at the freshman quarterback, Colt McCoy, only his second start, and it's against the top-ranked team in the nation. John Saunders back in New York with the primetime pulse over on ESPN right now. Georgia leading South Carolina 10 to nothing. And on ESPN 2, LSU blowing out Arizona 31 zip. Brent, back to you. Sophomore Jamal Charles. He's number 25. This will be his first series. Folks, he's got a little serious speed. Fourth in the NCAA 100 meters. And he did that while also carrying a little bit of a football load without even working hard at it. So he's the running back alongside Colt McCoy. And he gets the first handoff to start this series. And there is that speed. A first down to the 32 yard line Marcus Freeman makes the stop it's a 12 yard run well we've talked about Colt McCoy we've mentioned Tuscola Texas where is it folks there it is a population of around 700 how far down here to Austin 250 look at that capacity 80,000 Bob Debbie you ever recruit anybody from Tuscola Texas for the Aggies <laughs> sweet play now and there's the pitch Another first down, and Charles is going left, right, left, right. You talk about Tuscola, Texas, as we see Colt McCoy run the option. You know it's small in the state of Texas when they don't have a Dairy Queen in that town. You guys have all oh, been through these small towns. It, yeah. If there's no Dairy Queen, that's a small Texas town. As we look at his dad, what's going through his mind right now? He's a football coach. Colt is knocked down and uh, on the pitch, and uh, 
Kirk, they're running this beautifully with Charles, the running back. Well, Ohio State is crashing down on Colt McCoy. and Give him a lot of credit here for being prepared to make the pitch. And once he makes the pitch, there's a little bit of a difference now with Jamal Charles. Brent, as you indicated, the speed that he has to get to the outside. Ohio State right now having a tough time adjusting to that speed of Jamal Charles. Selvin Young, the veteran, who cocks his stance a little bit, now replaces Charles. And there is the quick pass for the first down, his first completion, and it goes to Quan Cosby. He was in the Los Angeles Angels organization and uh, came on back and played football. He was a very highly recruited high school wide receiver, though. And a great plan by Greg Davis, again, doing the things that Colt McCoy is most comfortable doing, some options, some quick passes. Here's that option look again, and McCoy's going to take a lick. Battles away with Laurinaitis, number 33, hanging on. 33, Laurinaitis on the tackle. I really like Laurinaitis, the young linebacker. Played last year some as a freshman. Watch the speed from the inside out. Excellent job defending the option right there. Young linebacker who had to step in for Bobby Carpenter, Brent, as you remember, in the Michigan game, and then also the Fiesta Bowl against Notre Dame. He's become a leader this year for them. Second down and 11 as the horns mount a drive. Daylight back on a cutback run to the 25-yard line. The veteran from Houston, senior Selvin Young, 12 more yards. And they are ripping huge holes now in that defense. And they're doing it with just a couple of huddles along the way. A little counter, and you see big Justin Blaylock at 340 pounds pulling around. Brent, you mentioned Selvin Young has dropped 15 pounds since the Rose Bowl. He does look quicker to me, Kirk. And all of a sudden, Texas offensive line, the quick tempo, they're starting to control the line of scrimmage. Selvin came out and then went back in. And so Charles is back off to the sideline. And on first down, after it again into Selvin Young's hands. You know why he said, I got this one. He wants to make the catch. He said, hey, I got it, young guy. He, actually, Selvin Young's a big brother to Jamal Charles. He probably thought, hey, little guy, let me take this one and see what I can do with it. 15 pounds off of Selvin Young, being healthy for Selvin Young. He has waited to become the leader with being a roommate of Vince Young last year. It's his turn, and he's taking advantage of it right now. Second down and seven. McCoy and the Horns mounting a drive. Bump incomplete. Interference is called. Sweet, the intended receiver. Malcolm Jenkins bumps him. One of the big questions. Pass interference. Defense number five. 15 yard penalty. And he met number two, of course, Jenkins, as you can watch. And here's what happens, Kirk, when you don't play the ball as a defensive back. You saw Malcolm Jenkins just try to play through Lima Swede. That was an obvious call. I was going to say, one of the big questions about the Buckeyes, the defensive backfield. Jamal Charles, number 25, he's now the running back. The officials are going to respot the ball right now. Let's uh, see where they finally put it down. I think they put it down at about the seven-yard line. You know, the nerves that we talked about for the young quarterback, you can forget about him now. He is settled into this position. He's in a comfort zone, which is what Greg Davis wanted to do. And now, all of a sudden, he's just worrying about executing the game plan. And how about Texas? No huddle basically on this whole drive with the redshirt freshman quarterback. In trouble off the blitz. Steps away from him. Fires in zone. Incomplete. He eluded the corner blitz, but there was enormous pressure, and the Buckeyes did a fine job of also defending the receiver in the corner. Well, the first thing you see, the athletic ability right now is Malcolm Jenkins misses Colt McCoy, and then the athletic effort by Lima Swede right here comes up with a tremendous one-hand catch. But it doesn't count Ooh. when you're out of bounds and you drop it. <laughs> so two. Second down and goal. Snaps it off. This one's complete. 
short of the end zone. Fumble picked up on the run now by Washington. Donald Washington coming down the far sideline, bumped out of bounds on the Buckeye bench. And big number 33, James Laurinaitis in the middle of it against Billy Pittman. And you talk about things that win football games, maybe win national championships. I want you to watch this effort by James Laurinaitis right there to strip the football out. Those things win these kind of games, maybe win national championships. And Billy Pittman there fighting to get extra yard, had the ball out far, trying to stretch it out, and a big impact there by Laronidas jarred it loose before his knee touched. Big turnover and a big sequence of events here for Ohio State. And now do you get Ted Ginn involved in some kind of reverse or something right now? Take advantage of this momentum if you're Ohio State. Maurice Wells is the running back. Time out on the field. Coach's challenge. So this is the earliest challenge that we have heard of. And Mac Brown telling us that he would take the challenge to the fourth quarter. I am I am almost stunned by this after having a conversation with Mac. He knows it's already been reviewed up in the booth. There was time to see it. Did you see anything, Bob? Does he have a point here? Brent, I'm as surprised as you are because, no, he doesn't have a point. That ball is clearly stripped out, and we oh. were sitting on the couch yesterday with Matt Brown. Oh, absolutely. This, Look, is this conversation mistake. came up. He said he is going to save his timeouts because the point is they're being reviewed anyhow exactly. in the press box. And that we had a perfect angle. We got enough Texas fans they can sneak a peek up here and say, Matt, turn it over now. I, because the coaches have told us there's no use using that challenge. You're going to need it late. And this is pretty obvious, isn't it, that Laurinaitis has got the ball out, Kirk? Well, the ball is out, and when you're a coach, and you might sit on the couch and talk about, I'm going to save it for the fourth quarter, but that was such a big point in this football game that he felt, maybe he talked to Pittman and said, wait, were you down? Uh, uh, you, it may be a big point right now, but I guarantee you there'll be you a like to have, like the to have that quarter. Thing. I guarantee you that's how football operates. First down and 10 at midfield here. It's already been confirmed by replay, so there's nothing they can do, and, and they've told the Texas sideline uh, somebody has made a mistake down. That's, that's simply you would not do that in that situation. And they lose, the, time. they lose the time out here. He is unhappy. Akina, the assistant coach, and Texas loses a timeout on top of it, remember, on a coach's challenge. So it's one versus two. It's Texas. It's Ohio State. And the passions are running high, folks. I thought Coach Davey had an interesting point here. Big turn of events and the momentum of the game. If you get Teddy Ginn isolated one-on-one, -on -one, so you take a shot down the field right here. And he is isolated one-on-one -on, -one on Aaron Harris. Smith fakes. Looks to go deep. Diving Gonzalez catch at the 25. What a pair of hands. It was Gonzalez against the Michigan Wolverines who rose up and made that huge catch as Ohio State came back to win that game in Ann Arbor. A very underrated receiver because all we do is talk about number seven. And Anthony Gonzalez comes all the way across the football field again. Man to man. Kirk Michael Griffin he's not going to match up on Anthony Gonzalez and that's what makes the Ohio State attack so good is they have three or four receivers if you man up a safety on Anthony Gonzalez to, for Troy Smith that's pitching ten. Maurice Wells splits out of the backfield the running back they go empty with Troy the offensive line gives him plenty of time a little bit high and it should have been caught though it was not a perfect throw to Wells and that's Maurice remember the sophomore from Jacksonville Florida but I thought from the naked eye that the youngster should have grabbed. I think that's why Maurice is a running back <laughs> and not a wide receiver. He comes down and just runs the curl route. Again, a great window to throw the football through right there. Troy Smith, you're guy exactly right. That football should have been caught. Should have been caught. They went to the empty set. They flexed the tail back out. And that's one that Maurice Wells knows. He's got to make that catch. This is the second time that Ohio State has mounted a serious drive. You figure they've got to come away with something. There was movement in the offensive line. 
This is going to cost them a big five yards. And uh, Kirk, I want to go back on a point on that first drive that failed with the missed field goal. You said Ball that starts. Jim Trestle does offense. not have five his security penalty. blanket this Still year. Second down. Uh, he, he does not have the security blanket. And one of the things that he was concerned about coming on the road was the conditioning factor in the heat. And Brent, we talked about this before the game. The one thing that's for sure is the, the depth, the depth on their offensive line. They're playing their entire second unit of the offensive line. And if they don't have a chance to score, not having Mike Nugent or Josh Houston is a major concern for them after missing that first field goal. But the second unit right now in there, depth, a big priority for Ohio State in the heat. Second and 15, and here's Smith. Got Gonzalez again. What a combo. A first down, and how about the strength of this arm on this throw? There are some scouts who are going to take note when he rifles this one to the sideline. And folks, he's a little undersized for Sunday ball, but he's a good, good-looking quarterback. And Brent, you remember our conversation with Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator, yesterday? He said they are going to know on every snap where number seven Ted Ginn is. They better right now change that plan a little bit and find out where number 11 is for the Buckeyes. At the 12-yard line, 11 is over on the slot the formation and Smith is eaten up by that defensive front that was Derek Loki the defensive tackle nose man and see coach I think that all the talk this week about Terrell Brown not being in him being the best cover corner for Texas when you talk to the Texas coaches Aaron Ross is the best cover corner what you lose in Terrell Brown is an experienced guy a physical guy and now you're putting in young corners and safeties who have never been in that situation so it wasn't so much how teddy ginn would benefit it was anthony gonzalez and some of the other ohio state receivers and right now that's how ohio state's trying to attack it georgia given the old ball coach fits in that one down side smith rolling the pocket calmly fires touchdown in the corner of the end zone down there it was a beautiful throw for the score and he just worked anthony gonzalez and there is one of my favorite characters from Columbus, folks, because he looked like the, the great old coach. And Gonzalez with the touchdown puts the Buckeyes ahead. And I'll tell you something, Troy Smith is on fire. We saw him outplay Brady Quinn in the Fiesta Bowl. Tim Crowder right here, number 80, loses contain. And how about that bullet? Anthony Gonzalez. The patience there by Teddy again, and then picking on Brandon Foster, who was in for Terrell Brown for a touchdown. Petrie adds the extra point. So remember how this started. It was a first and goal for Texas going in from the seven yard line. Laurinaitis forced the turnover. And then Kirk, it was Gonzalez. And Kirk just mentioned it. Brandon Foster locked up one on one with Anthony Gonzalez. The Buckeyes take advantage of it. And because of their ability to mix it up, every time Troy Smith has a ball fake, the linebackers freeze. He had to get outside of the pocket by a lot of time. Anthony Gonzalez made two or three moves on Foster to finally have a chance to make the catch and to make that catch for the touchdown. But picking on the young, inexperienced secondary. We got an update. Let's go to Matt Weiner in New York. Matt? Brent, do I ever have a Taco Bell update for you from Tallahassee? Florida State seems to be suffering the effects of the short week against Troy. Omar Holgebuch's pass is tipped, caught by Gary Banks. The Trojans punch it in on their next snap. 17-10 Troy in the fourth quarter. Holy moly. Where did that come from, Kirk? Huh? I don't think I don't think we talked about that one on college game day. I don't think anybody expected that. Oh, we just, my. The Knowles just looked like a team on a mission against the Miami Hurricanes. They went to sleep. There were points in that game, though, and I thought both teams were sloppy on offense. Oh, yeah. I watched you guys down there on Monday night. 104 to go here in the first quarter, and so Texas reveals a weakness as they lose a starting corner, and the Buckeyes take advantage of it. Next week, a resurgent Nebraska team heads to Los Angeles in search of an upset. They will take on number three, USC. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines next Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. College football lives here, so we'll take this show on the road. We'll go to the West Coast, and a question for you folks, who's going to be number two? You figure the loser of this game will slip, 
Notre Dame very impressive today in beating Penn State. USC, well, they were on the road, dumped Arkansas, and they're taking the week off. So they could rise up to number two. We'll have to wait and see when the polls come out. Selvin Young, the veteran, on the fake now by McCoy. Going deep, and that was Andre Amos, the defender, who just knocked it down at the right instant. Billy Pittman, who had a big game last year in Columbus. And you're gonna see Billy Pittman get inside Andre Amos on the slant route right here. He ends up in great position. No safety in the middle of the field. And Andre Amos over the top a little bit right there. Might have got away with the call. Second down and 10. Selvin stretches it to the right to daylight, breaks free on a cutback, stumbling to midfield. <laughs> 30 yard burst by Selvin Young. And amazing what 15 pounds a difference it makes. Selvin Young right here, excellent speed. You say Blaylock right there gets a little block on Laronitis. Then in the open field, he breaks down Andre Amos. I'll tell you what, that weight loss helped this running back. He looks quick. Alex Barrow and Todd Denver are in the defensive line. Trying to stretch it now with the youngster, Charles, as the first quarter comes to an end here in Austin, Texas. Both teams threaten Ohio State scores at number one leads number two and ESPN Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Ammunition and lots of it for the big gun when they score down here They loaded up and fired No Vince Young for that cannon's kind of quiet down there so far. Second down now six yards to go Texas trailing by seven He's in the inside handoff and they're trying to muscle their way toward the first down line and again Jamal Charles and our pack life game summary and our first uh, quarter stats uh, look like this. Kirk, what do you make of that? I think Texas is trying to obviously run the football with their two talented running backs, trying to get it to the outside, take pressure off their young quarterback. And for Ohio State, it's been mixed, but they also are trying to go after the youth in the secondary with Terrell Brown out. It's not so much just Teddy Ginn, but we've seen Anthony Gonzalez very, very involved here early for the Buckeyes. From the shotgun, Texas also has run the, the option look third and short. And the Buckeyes swallow the youngster. It is Curtis Terry, the junior linebacker from Cleveland, Ohio. And here's what I see, the difference between Texas offense and Ohio State offense. You see Texas running out of the spread right there, going sideways, where Ohio State, Kirk, in that situation, can line up in the I formation and run downhill. One of the disadvantages of the spread offense right there, that short right. yardage. And Quinn Pitcock that time got the penetration to be able to get in there and force the Texas line back. Curtis Terry, one of many of those fine football players, played for Ted Ginn's father back in Glenville High School. Cleveland area, what a story that is. Greg Johnson in now to punt. And they're trying to keep it away from Ted. And it's inside the 20. It'll roll down about the 16-yard line. Well, some folks we'd have said we'd have a game up into the 50s. Beginning to look like we're going to be lucky to have one into the 20s. It's Saturday night football. It's one versus two. John Saunders back in New York with your prime time pulse over on ESPN. Georgia's just kicked a field goal to push it to 15 nothing. Meanwhile, LSU just continues to crush Arizona 38 to zip is the score right now. Brent, back to you.
We are back just past the top of the hour. Eight Central Time here in Austin, Texas. I'm Brent Lusberger with Bob Davy at Kirk Herb Street and Lisa Salter. Nice to have you along with us tonight. One versus two. Ohio State leads it by seven. Troy Smith fires another completed pass. And you know, Troy Smith and Ted Ginn are such good friends. Uh, let's take a look at him. We've known each other since we were about six or seven years old. Uh, it started, you know, back home in the streets of Cleveland. Troy's like a brother. And I got down here to take me under his wing, make sure that, you know, I got to my right spots, you know, as far as on the campus. It's a real deep, strong relationship, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to be brothers, you know, our whole life. I really recommend the article on Ted Ginn Sr. in the issue ESPN, the magazine. Uh, I wish Ted Ginn was on the cover instead of Terrell Owens, but that's a different story. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful story about an inner city school and what could be done for youngsters like uh, Troy Smith, who came from nowhere, and Ted Ginn Sr. basically adopted him and moved him in with the family. Now, Sr. had a game. There he is, folks. There is a guy who means so much. He started as a security guard at that high school I read back in Glenville, and I think now he's got 21 youngsters on scholarship tonight. And, uh, you know, congratulations to him and, uh, and men all across this country who work with youngsters. And there is Ted Ginn Jr. Second down and 10 now. Smith high incomplete they went in that time Aaron Ross with the coverage Aaron Ross is the best cover corner on Texas he a lot of times is on an island against Ted again pretty good coverage but if you notice you can see Michael Griffin cheating just a bit to help out Aaron Ross in case Ted again moves to the middle of the field coach and having that safety is a nice security blanket for the corner Ross it's like having a, an eraser back there it eliminates any mistakes a corner may make third and ten Smith tries to pull out in trouble. So elusive. Incomplete. No one really had a chance to catch it, but Ginn had cut over in that direction. And Smith learning to fight another day. Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator from Texas, making some adjustments, bringing pressure from a different, uh, different ways. And I think that's the adjustment that Gene Chizik, again, the defensive coordinator, trying to make here. He is a coach that has won 29 straight games as a defensive coordinator. What's interesting is he went Auburn undefeated. He also was, of course, last year at Texas, won a national championship, one of the best in the business. He was sitting down. One of the rare moments you see him sit down, and you saw him stand up in that coaching group towards the end. Capasso hangs a beautiful punt. Aaron Ross back deep, fields it at the 17-yard line. And he is down. We'll take a break. 12-13 to go. Number one, Ohio State. Their first visit ever to Austin, Texas, and they lead it by seven. Yes, indeed. The football season's upon us, and Monday night football moves to ESPN. Mike Tarico heard him there on the uh, promo for the two games. I spoke with Dick Vermeil, one of the broadcasters on the second game, with Brad Nessler and Ron Jaworski. Looking forward to the uh, Chargers game out west with the Raiders. Hasn't done a game since he worked the Rose Bowl with me back when with the... Uh, these Ohio State Buckeyes rallying to beat Arizona State. And here is Colt McCoy for Texas. Snapping one off incomplete. And now it's time for our AFLAC trivia question. Let's see what the fellas came up with. What was the first regular season, number one versus number two matchup? Teams ranked in the top two now in both polls. Remember the AP poll? That goes back in the late 30s. And, uh, and then the coaches' poll came along. So what was the first? Number one versus number two matches. Second down and ten. Corners soften up. McCoy throws in underneath them, but well short of the first down here, Kirk. And right now, let's check in with Matt Weiner. Well, Brent, Florida State is on the comeback against Troy. They have just 28 yards rushing. They've gone to the air 
Drew Weatherford, 29 of 42, 329 yards in that touchdown pass to Chris Davis. Tied at 17, Seminoles drive. The score in a little order. You imagine poor Jeff Bowden if they were to accidentally lose that game. He <laughs> would go from, he's a hero, to right back to being on the hot seat. I'm sure old Bobby wouldn't catch a little <laughs> flack for that. He always seems to fall down to his son. Yeah, I don't know. Troy would be a big one down <laughs> yeah. there. Third down and three. Incomplete. It's amazing here early in this game for Ohio State. Rotating numerous players in and out. Jim Tressel told me this week that his goal in the first half was to play 57 guys. 57 players, and we've seen the offensive line, the entire group rotating. That time, the entire second unit, of the defense was lined up. They want to try to survive the first half by rotating players in and then go back to the starters in the second half. They're really concerned about the heat and humidity down in Austin. Greg Johnson, left-footed punter in, and missed again, is back there waiting again. comes again swallowed at the 30-yard line so Ohio State leads Texas by 7 nothing here and the Buckeye band is with us it's Saturday night football on ABC Saturday night football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines, the low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. General Motors, a new level of quality, a new level of confidence. And Aflac, ask about it at work. So on this night, the stars have come out for number one versus number two, with number one leading it by seven, and there is LeBron James, who if he'd gone to college, to a lot of folks, it would have been Ohio State. He's just one of many sports and movie stars who are with us here tonight. Torrey Smith trying to air it out, going deep, and he overthrew Mr. Ginn. And that's hard to do, folks. We just talked about how Texas is trying to use a safety in the middle. That time, they were not able to get Michael Griffin to the middle. They are blitzing more and more on, t on Troy Smith to try to get the pressure to slow down him, his momentum. That time, he had time to throw. He had a one-on-one -on -one matchup that he wanted on the outside. Aaron Ross by himself, isolated against Teddy again. And if he puts a little bit more air on that football, that's a touchdown and a big play for the Bucks. Second and ten. Getting back with the power running game in Pittman. So our Aflac trivia question regarding number one versus number two. Both polls. When is the last time? Remember now, regular season. Not a bowl game. When was the last? The first one of the one versus twos. There it is right there. October 12, 1963. Daryl Royal won that one in the regular season went on a 1-1 in a bowl game against Navy and captured a national championship third down and six again you have Gonzalez on the safety in the slot throwing in underneath the Rory Nickel the first catch of the night by the tight end and Robert Joseph a backup safety makes the stop. Good job here the last two series by Texas again Gene Chizik bringing a lot more pressure and mixing up the looks just trying to get Troy Smith off balance a little bit and get his receivers and Troy to the point where they don't have quite the rhythm that they had there in the first quarter. The pass up punting and Ross is back deep. <laughs> Oh, he's got a big leg, doesn't he? At the 22-yard line. And uh, let's check in now with Matt Weiner on a in-game Sports Center report, Matt. 
All right, Brent, Florida State has stormed back to take the lead against Troy after an interception. Joe Surratt, the fullback from four yards out. The Seminoles still only have 48 yards rushing in this game, but they do lead Troy by a touchdown inside two minutes. I'll tell you what, fear of embarrassment <laughs> sometimes <laughs> is the greatest motivator, and I think that's the Seminoles right there. And Troy might have gotten a little nervous there <laughs> thinking about what they were about to do. Got to wonder about the, the horn struggling here with Colt McCoy. There he completed a pass to Swede. Short of his first down marker. And tonight's aerial coverage brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. As you look down on our sold out scene here, Texas Memorial Stadium. They're going to enlarge it even more. The bottom part there, they're going to tear it all out at the end of this season, close it in. Have some more big old luxury boxes for these Texans who love this football team down here. And how about that big Godzilla Tron? That giant scoreboard we see right there in that the end zone. Biggest in the world. But I tell you what, I've been in this state enough. AM next year, Texas AM, will build one two square feet bigger. <laughs> <laughs> they better worry about beating the home. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm going to tell you that right now. Boy. That's getting a little long down there. That Charles in there at the running back. Uh, now, let, now, let me ask you this. When you. What, what was your record as a defensive coordinator against the Horns? Now, I know you know what it is. <laughs> so I'm going to let you say it because I don't want to say it now. The nine yeah. and one, I believe. Where was well, the, I don't want to correct you, but it actually was ten and one. Really? Yeah. I didn't give you credit for the tenth one, huh? I was wondering when you were going to get to that. <laughs> That's when the Aggies, Aggies used to you dominate. That was coming, series, Coach. Right? I knew it was coming. Uh, I thought you'd get it on earlier. I mean, that record. <laughs> you want me to open the night with a record. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. They're down now, and uh, Derek Loki in for Selvin Young. There's the defensive tackle for the first time as the road grader, and they run off his block and get the first down. Folks, you have got to see number 96. He's a starting there. He's coming back off the field. He's a road grader in these short yardage situations. He was a high school fullback, and uh, he just loves it. He said one day to Coach, Coach Brown, you got to just hand me the ball. <laughs> and he says you better pick up a fumble if you want the football. <laughs> <laughs> Their version of the fridge. He didn't pick up a big block there, but Texas did pick up a first down. And now you start to wonder, can they get Selvin Young and Jamal Charles back involved in the offense and get him going here? Yeah, I want to see if Colt McCoy can throw the ball down the field. It doesn't seem like he's thrown a ball more than five yards all night. There's a young man on the sideline who can throw it down the field. Jevin Sneed is his name. This time he goes down and complete. And he's saying, keep young Mr. Sneed over there on the sideline as he gets it to Selvin. Well, that's what Bob Davey just called for, and that time they protected off of the play action. But what I like to see is the ball is thrown up in the air, and it's a great job of adjusting back to the back to the football by Selvin Young. The ball is under thrown, but Selvin Young as a running back, running a wheel route that right down the sideline, recognized the ball was under thrown, came back against Ohio State's top cover corner, Malcolm Jenkins, and made a nice play. Charles in after the 29-yard game. Remember the horns at one time in this game had a first and goal from the seven and turned it over. Spinning, battling his way across the 35-yard line. Well, the, the timing of the pass downfield was perfect to try to just mix it up and to slow down the pressure from Ohio State's defense. Ohio State has an aggressive defense. Their whole plan tonight was to try to get into the head of Colt McCoy, making his first start in this big a game. They wanted to try to confuse him, see if they could rattle him with a variety of looks. And anytime he can get a big completion like that to slow them down, that's going to help them run the football game. Second down, keeping it on the ground. Across the 30-yard line, but short of the first down. Stopped by Laurinaitis, who's had a big game defensively for the Buckeyes. Number 33, forced the turnover inside the five-yard line. If you just joined us, Texas threatening. It was first and goal, then a pass interference call against Ohio State. Laurinaitis punched it out, and Donald Washington returned it down the sideline. And if Vince Young was a quarterback, I would say quarterback draw right now, but that's not Vince Young. 
Instead, it is Selvin Young who reaches out. And let's check in with Lisa. Well, Brent, there are some folks here tonight who think that Colt McCoy is a hero no matter what he does here tonight. The McCoys were at their lakefront home in Graham, Texas on Memorial Day when they heard screams across the lake. And it was pitch black outside. Still, Colton's dad hopped into the water and swam 300 yards to the other side. That's where they found Patina Harrington and her husband, Ken, who was having a seizure. Now, another neighbor had already called 911, so Colt ran a quarter of a mile up the hill to let paramedics know where to go. The Harringtons are here tonight. Ken is doing just fine. But Tina says that Colt McCoy saved her husband's life. And I asked him about it, and he said, I didn't do anything that anyone else wouldn't have done. Brent? Yeah, he's a real American hero story, isn't it, uh, Lisa? Wonderful, wonderful story. Hands the ball off. And, uh, so nice to see uh, Ken over there and uh, wearing the quarterback's number. And uh, I believe he went to school right here in Texas. And, uh, and yeah, he's the first to jump off uh, Vince Young's uh, bandwagon. He says Colt McCoy is his all-time favorite Texas quarterback, and understandably so. Nice to see you here tonight, sir. Second down and 11. You look in that helmet at Colt McCoy. He looks like he's about 12 or 13 years old, doesn't he? There's Pops over on the sideline. Hit on the release, got it off in time, complete for a big time throw under duress. Pulled in by Linus Swede. Great concentration by the quarterback there because Colt McCoy, I don't know if he realized that Curtis Terry was coming from his blind side, but he hurried just enough to get the ball off and he threw it to a position where Linus Swede had a great body position on the corner, great throw, and a great job of just blocking out that pass rush coming towards him. And no one liked that throw any more than the Harringtons. First down and 10. Coming back with the young running back and uh, jumped in the middle in there. Jamal Charles was hit by David Patterson, one of the fine defensive tackles. Those two defensive tackles, uh, depending on how they do this year, Quinn Pittock and David Patterson, they'll play Sunday football. But uh, the pros are looking to see if they, if they, so they like to say, empty their bucket on every play, those two. And, and not many people would have thought Ohio State with nine new starters on defense will be pitching the shutout right now with three minutes left in his first yep. half. Here's Laurinaitis. He's keyed it. Number 33. Selvin is back and running back off to the quarterback's right. Bounces. Out of bounds. He crossed the 10-yard line. And remember the last time that the horns marched in to the red zone curve. This happened. Well, they had an opportunity early in this football game. It was Billy Pittman making an effort, trying to extend the ball to try to pick up a first down, and James Laronitis charged the ball loose with a big hit. Donald Washington picked it up and went the other way, kind of a turning point in this game. Let's see this time if Texas can capitalize now on third down, getting inside the 10-yard line. Third and six for the horns. And at some point, Lima Swede at six foot five up here at the top of the screen has to enter into the mix. Hit again on the release. Incomplete. And McCoy had penalty flag thrown on this hit. It's back by the quarterback. Against Ohio State. Automatic first down. Jay Richardson on a little stunt coming into the inside slips through. I think it might have been helmet to helmet that time with Jay Richardson hitting Colt McCoy. Wow. Definitely was not a late hit. It I don't, had to be helmet to helmet, if anything. I don't see that. I didn't see any helmet to helmet. I didn't see him leading with the helmet or using the helmet as a weapon. It, def it definitely was not a late hit roughing the quarterback. And as you know, these are not reviewable, but let's take a close look at this again. Well, that's, that's I don't see how you can call that. That is a questionable call. I mean, at some point he has full pads on, right? It is contact on the quarterback. And you're a defensive uh, coach, and you're right, but you, you made a good point. You have to lower your head to c and make contact with an opposing player's head to be able to have that called against you. First and goal. But the courage by this kid is amazing. 
Charles is his running back, 25, short of the end zone. Can you imagine being Colt McCoy? We talked about him going up in this state, but think about the shoes that he's trying to fill. Vince Young, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play, not only for Texas, maybe in college football, and this is his first big test for the number two team defending national champions playing the number one team in the country. Greg Davis told us that when they came out of the spring, these two quarterbacks, Jevin Sneed and he, were dead even. When they came back in the fall, every coach knew it was McCoy's job. That's how familiar he was with the offense. Being a coach's son helped him tremendously understand the offense. Rolls pocket right, backside throws, got a touchdown, Texas. Colt McCoy hits Billy Pittman, and they're an extra point away from a tie. A 13-play drive. Richard freshman Colt McCoy. And remember the licks he took during this drive. Boy, a 13-play drive here. Very, very important for Texas before we get to halftime to get some momentum created. And how about Billy Pittman? Made the fumble at the other end of the field, comes back and has a touchdown opportunity for the Longhorns. And it goes back to one thing as Johnson ties it for the extra point. Let us not forget that personal foul penalty. Was it helmet to helmet? Is that why the referee called it and gave them a first down and the horns take advantage of it and there's colt's biggest fans the harrington family what a great moment jimmy haycock a fine co-defensive coordinator working his troops over there on the sideline after they came off the field. As Colt McCoy and the Horns drive in to tie this just inside of two minutes. Ted Ginn, back deep. They kick it away from him. Picked up by Gonzalez, and he is down short of the 35-yard line with 145 left on it. You know, we go back to that penalty and we think about it. It is an automatic penalty on helmet to helmet. Now, I want you two to watch this carefully and tell me if it's helmet to helmet. I say yes. I think it's helmet to helmet by the technicality of the rule. But if I'm coaching right now, Jay Richardson, I don't know what else I tell him to do You're a as a defensive coach. coach. How, do you, how would you coach that? How would you coach him to do anything differently there? I wouldn't. Okay. We know where you stand. First down and 10 for Troy Smith. Under pressure, bounces away beautifully. And steps out of bounds at the 37-yard line. The bottom line is Texas had the opportunity after they caught the break, and they capitalized. Colt McCoy coming of age right in front of our eyes. Four for four on that 13-play drive, giving Texas a very, very important touchdown here to get the crowd back into the game and to get his confidence up, feeling as if Texas can do some things on offense with him throwing the football. Very much in, in charge, Torrey Smith with the wristband. Steps up against the pressure, fires to the middle, and to the 40-yard line, and it's Brian Robisky, his second catch of the night in Young, and there's a penalty flag, so hang on now. So another big blow against the Buckeyes. If I'm Gene Chizik and I'm trying to stop Jim Trestle. Holding, 75 offense, 10-yard penalty, Still second down. They're gonna, Alex Boone. They're going to have to make some adjustments at halftime because it's become very obvious Ohio State trying to attack, not, not necessarily with Teddy Ginn against Aaron Ross. They're still taking their shots there. But it's not only Anthony Gonzalez, it's Brian Hartline, it's, it's Brian Rubisky. They're going to the second, third, and fourth receivers with matchups to their advantage against safeties and against the younger corners. Here is the statistic of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. Five penalties against the Buckeyes, none against the Longhorns. You can look at that both ways. Now. Second down and 17. Ray Small, the freshman. Bust right here. 
incomplete. Gonzalez to the 40. And that is about four yards short of the first down. Ohio State with all three timeouts remaining. Little surprise, they don't use a timeout right now and just settle down on a key third and fourth. Texas is confused. That time a complete bust in their coverage to give them a shot here at third down. And again gives them a first down, working against Ross. Very, very dangerous to leave a corner as even as talented as Aaron Ross by himself when the Ohio State offense is in hurry up because if Teddy Ginn were able to slip just one tackle, he's going 50 yards for a touchdown. Timeout has been called. So the Buckeyes, the Buckeyes use a, uh, use a timeout. So we look at this game and, uh, and how it has unfolded and a very low scoring first half. We've got 28 seconds remaining, a touchdown apiece. Uh, the horns were turned away, Kirk and Bob, uh, early by that fumble when Lauren Itis uh, punched it out. But, uh, but what's your feeling here about what we've seen? Well, I think what happens here for Ohio State is very, very important for both sides. I thought Texas gained some momentum by finally being able to sustain a drive and put it into the end zone to tie the game. It got the stadium alive. It got the crowd more involved. And I think it created some confidence here for Texas that they needed before they got to halftime. But they've got to stop Ohio State here. Yeah, and I look at it. It's a 7-7 game, but there's been a lot more plays, a lot more entertaining than what you think a 7-7 football game would give you. But I'll tell you what, guys, we got a big-time game here tonight now. Oh, really? I like it. <laughs> I like it. His nickname is Scoop. Oh, You're, yeah. <laughs> where'd you stay this? Where'd, where'd you I, say, where'd I, I stay? Right? Yeah, where'd you stay, Kirk? I, I, were you, huh? Somebody said you were four seasons. <laughs> I stumbled in. I stumbled in there. There was a mistake with the travel department, and I stumbled over there. <laughs> I don't want that mistake. First down and ten now. Oh, my rascals. All right, here's Troy Smith. Fire, got it open. Gonzalez grabs another one across the 30-yard line. Great grab by number 11. And the Buckeyes hurrying up. 22 seconds on that 23-yard gain. Ohio State once again. Nice little decoy disguising by Anthony Gonzalez. Ohio State feels that Teddy Ginn gets all the attention, but their best, most complete receiver is Anthony Gonzalez. He found a nice seam in the zone. But I've got to ask you, what coverage was that i mean texas has had some gaping holes in that secondary i think i think they're confused these last three or four plays there's been a lot of confusion you can see the communication with texas in their defensive backfield where they're trying to get on the same page and ohio state mixing up formations mixing up personnel and i think that's this time confusing this defense but anthony gonzalez has been all over the field and he's been able to take advantage of the youth in the tech in the texas secondary terrell brown of course is out of this game and it's been up to brandon foster and ryan palmer and even the safeties here they've not, not been able to stay up with number 11. and i don't think there's any question troy smith's go-to receiver is number 11 anthony gonzalez that is his safety net right there it was last year, Santonio Holmes. Teddy Ginn gets a lot of the attention because of his speed, and he's a great receiver. But it's a nice compliment to have Anthony Gonzalez on the other side. So here we go now, 22 seconds. Our guys have one timeout remaining. Assistant coach Gene Chizik's defense, good set. From the 29 yard line. Throwing deep, Ginn runs it in, touchdown, Ted Ginn, and he beat Ross. Brent, when we came over to the walkthrough, Coach, uh, myself, and, and you, and we had a chance with Lisa to talk to the Ohio State players, one of the things that Troy Smith told me was, he has a lot more freedom at the line of scrimmage to make a check. And he, when he sees Teddy again in this game, one-on-one, -on -one, he has the flexibility to turn it loose. And he made a check there at the line of scrimmage because he saw Teddy one-on-one -on -one against Aaron Ross and went right by him for the touchdown. Perfect throw by Troy Smith. And Petri nails the extra point. The thing you're going to notice right here, Ohio State puts three receivers into the boundary. They leave Ted Ginn to the wide side of the field. It clearly defined the coverage for Troy Smith. 
and just straight man-to-man -man bump and run. And the mistake right there that the corner Aaron Ross made, Kirk, he looked back to the ball with Teddy Ginn out ahead of him. And that's a no-no. And the speed. We keep bragging about Anthony Gonzalez. We keep bragging about how good a player he is on the other side of, of Teddy Ginn. It's because Teddy Ginn is so explosive that it takes the attention away from Anthony Gonzalez. But we talk about Talk about his go-to guy. At the end of the day, it's the speed in the backyard ball between Troy Smith and Teddy Ginn. You know, Kirk, I want to go back to uh, something that uh, Bob Davis said earlier, that Troy Smith is a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate, and he can really step up here tonight. Yeah, I mean, this stage builds that foundation even stronger, doesn't it? I was wondering when you're going to mention that H word because I see the same thing you do. You had him in the Fiesta Bowl against Brady Quinn. And the winner of that game became the front runner yes. coming into this year. Those are the top two candidates for the Heisman. But this oh, day, oh, hold on now, hold and on. Adrian whoa, Peterson, whoa, whoa. you're going to put Adrian, 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 Adrian with that right offense there. without a passing game. Oh, well, you can't eliminate the great uh, running back. I love him. He might be the most talented oh, player in college football. Now. But I don't know if he's going to get, know enough, you live in the get enough yardage. Whoa, now we have, come on now. I don't think he's going to get enough yardage this year. Where is Lee Corso when I need him? <laughs> That's a hard kickoff. You talk about a swing of momentum. Texas looked like they had a chance to tie it, come up with a stop, get to halftime, 7-7. Seven seven, and Ohio State comes right back, puts six points on the board, and now they're going to hit the showers with the, se the seven-point lead and the momentum. You talk about Troy Smith. A lot of people ask, why do coaches give guys second chances? I think this is why. There's no question Jim Tressel has given him two or three opportunities. He had some off-field problems early in his career. This guy's already graduated from Ohio State. He's a great team leader. That's why you give guys second chances in your football program. End of the first half. Ohio State with that late touchdown pass to Ted Ginn from his dear friend Troy Smith puts him up. And Ginn took it to the house. Let's go to Lisa. Thanks, Frank. Coach, what went right on that last drive? They thought they were going into halftime tied up. What went right on that last drive for you? You know, our kids practice a lot, those two-minute drills, and Troy made a lot of plays. Pass protection was good, and, you know, we got single coverage for Teddy, and whenever we get single coverage for Teddy, we have a good chance. You know, that penalty play that, that kept their touchdown drive alive, the, the official explained it to you. What did he tell you? He said he's protecting the quarterback, which I understand. Good luck second half. Troy Smith throws for 219 yards and two touchdowns. And right now, let's go to John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie in New York. Take it away, John. I wonder why Brent would give you the extra five. He called that Hail Mary he sure did. as well. But I'll give you the credit. You made the call on our pregame show today saying that Gonzalez would have a big game as well as Ginn. In balanced coverages, the safety is going, going to be helping on Ted Ginn's side. Gonzalez is the guy that's going to be one-on-one -on -one most of the day. But like we saw at the end, Again, one-on-one -on -one coverage, big play guy. It was interesting to see in the course of the game how Ohio State started getting blitzed, their Texas defense is blitzing, and then got him out of sync, got Troy Smith out of sync, and he adjusted as it went on. They got in a two-minute drill and made plays against the blitz. Speaking of adjusting, the whole pregame, all week leading up to this game, we've asked, asked the question, Colt McCoy, will he be able mm -hmm. to handle this? Well, Colt McCoy, I think, has answered everybody's questions about that. He's a smooth, poised young man. He has a lot of confidence going to halftime. So I really believe coming out in the second half, Texas's defense has to match what Colt McCoy's done with his offensive unit. We've seen Ohio State's defense, and they played better than everybody thought they could. All right, stick around. When we return, we'll come back with some highlights you will not want to miss. Florida State and Troy, a struggle. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Austin and rejoin Chris Fowler and Lee Corso. All right, John, thank you. Wild Saturday here. We look forward to a good last 30 minutes. What a difference from a year ago. Ted Ginn held to just two catches by Texas a year ago. He's got four for 85, and Gonzalez, seven catches. Well, first of all, if you're Texas, you got to get this Colt McCoy to run the no-huddle offense, run the option play, roll out, and then every once in a while. Now, if you're Ohio State, just do this. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> get number 10 the ball every time. Troy Smith has had 219 yards two touchdowns he's averaged 17 yards per completion in the first half the guy's having a heisman night 
right here, one versus two. Troy Smith is the difference between these two teams. And in the Longhorn secondary, I agree with our buddy yeah. Kirk. There's some confusion back there. Remember, Marcus Griffin, the starting safety, knocked out an injury. Yeah. So already with Brown out, Griffin injured, some things to sort out in the back end for the Longhorns in the second half. And the second half will be coming right up from Austin, Texas. After these messages, a word from your ABC stations. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Saturday night football on ABC and number one Ohio State striking with less than 30 seconds to go in the first half leads number two Texas by a touchdown welcome back everybody I'm Brad Musburger with Kirk Herbstreit Bob Davey and uh, Kirk that last touchdown pass uh, there were some interesting things well what I'm seeing right now are two even football teams competing the only difference is Troy Smith Troy Smith is 13 and 19 in the first half for 219 yards biggest play right before the half recognized one-on-one -on -one coverage with Teddy again and he makes the audible at the line of scrimmage with his hand. The gesture to the, with the hand indicates to Ted again that it's one-on-one. -on -one. What I liked is how he looked to safety, Griffin off, and then made the throw to the outside right where Ted again can make the catch. And how about the maturation of Ted again as a receiver? Watch this escape move right there as he beats the bump and run coverage by Aaron Ross. Last week, Troy Smith threw for 297 yards and three touchdowns. The first half tonight, 219 yards and two more touchdowns. Texas will get the ball to start against Smith and the Buckeyes. Selvin Young and Quan Cosby are back deep. Fielded on the bounce by Selvin. Down at the 20-yard line, our pack life. First half statistics look like this. And Bob, as you look at this, what jumps out off that page to you? What jumps out at me is the problems Texas has in the secondary trying to defend the pass of Ohio State. What doesn't show up in the stats is the poise of Troy Smith. We saw in this matchup a year ago, Vince Young take his team to, to into Columbus and play with such great poise. And now, a year later, we're seeing in the first half, very similar attitude from the Ohio State quarterback. And behind Colt McCoy, he has quarterback the entire game. Number 12, his second start. Hands it off to the running back, Charles. And let's check in with Lisa. What did uh, Coach Mac Brown have to say? Well, Brent, Mac Brown told me that he told his kids at halftime to keep your confidence. He said, look, guys, we came from behind last year with the horseshoe. You came from behind at the Rose Bowl. You just got to stay in this and try to tie the game up in the first five minutes of the second half. I also asked him when he told us yesterday that he would not challenge anything until the fourth quarter, why he challenged that fumble in the first quarter. And he said, one of my kids said it was a bad call. It didn't come up, up on the replay I wanted to keep my challenge but it was such a critical time of the game that I thought I had to use it it was a mistake all right thank you Lisa handoff on the play and again first down strong run by Charles to the 31 yard line you know as I watch this football game we really haven't seen Jamal Charles number 25 explode yet but keep in mind he is a 10 100 meters I'm going to make a strong statement. I think the two fastest football players in the country on the field tonight with Ted Ginn and Jamal Charles. If they're not too tired, can we, can we maybe talk them into 100 yards after the ball game tonight? <laughs> that would be, this whole stadium would stay and watch that. First and 10. Picked off. Laurinaitis, who's had a monster night for the Buckeyes with the interception and they're within striking distance again. First, you're going to get a chance to see what Colt McCoy sees right here from behind the quarterback. But how about James Laurinaitis? A game like this of this magnitude, Kirk, with this stage, this kind of game's changed young guys' lives. This guy tonight is 
the, the big hit on the goal line yep. early in the game caused fumble, and now the big interception. And the thing, guys, it's the first mistake we've seen from the Texas quarterback, the young quarterback making his first start in the big game, and Laronitis has been all over the field. Colt McCoy didn't even see number 33. Now first and 10. Hand off to Pittman. Powers into the middle of that burnt orange defense and Derek Loki, the nose man from Denton, Texas. And there he is talking to Greg Davis upstairs, running down the mistake that was made on the field. And I think this is key right now. How does Colt McCoy bounce back? Last week in his first college game against North Texas, it was easy. We look at Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator. How resilient is Colt McCoy? We've talked about that all day. The adversity finally hitting him. How does he respond? That's exactly right. And with all the pressure of Texas trying to come back on his shoulders. Second and eight. Backside. Down goes Smith. But strong enough to hold on to the football. Hit from behind by Robinson. And Brian Robinson, who himself dropped 15 pounds as the defensive end, you're going to see him coming from the backside. He beat Alex Boone, the 325-pound offensive tackle. But, Kirk, it's speed over size. Speed and effort. What an amazing job by Robinson to come from the backside, to come down and not give up on the play to bring down Troy Smith. Third and 15. They're going to run for it with Pittman. Angling and short of the first down as Michael Griffin, one of the twins, alongside Marcus is the safety. When they played in high school, Michael, whom you're looking at, he was the quarterback. And how about the call on third and long? Jim Trestle comes with the little counter play. Pittman breaks it outside. There's no one out there for the offensive guard downing to block Sets up a makeable field goal right now for the Buckeyes. Aaron Petrie missed one on their first drive from 28 yards. This is 31. Different angle. Got this one. One of two. And that one from the left hash. Jim Trussell of the Buckeyes had three. Go up by 10 now. 17-7. Take advantage of the interception. ABC HD presented by Dish Network. Ohio State 17, Texas 7. The linebacker who went to Wyzetta High School, just outside Minneapolis, James Laurinaitis with a huge night. His daddy, a professional wrestler. Very popular back in the 80s and 90s, known as the animal of the Legion of Doom. And tonight his son is the Legion of Doom. And uh, man, I'll tell you, Lisa, you found a you found a guy who he can step pretty good down there now. Uh, Emmett Smith, now he's pretty nimble. That's right, Brent. The NFL's all-time leading rusher. Uh, Emmett, you've been cutting a rug all summer. I'll get to that. But a couple of minutes ago, you said we we're watching the national champion. I got to ask you, which one do you think it is? Texas, you said you think we're watching the potential national oh, yeah. champion. I, I which think, one? I think so. I mean, Ohio State definitely have the better ball club. We used to talk about the quarterback position and some of the other skill position. I mean, they kind of neutralize themselves. But the quarterback position is such a key role. In, in this ball game, and I think Ohio State have the edge in that, in that category. Now I'm going to ask you about your dancing after this play. Yeah, we want to hear about that. So we'll come back down, and uh, right now the heat is on young Colt McCoy, and uh, they give him a very comfortable pass, and let's go back to Lisa. All right, Emmett, we always knew that you were good on your feet, but you're a competitor in Dancing with the Stars this season. You've been training for five weeks. How's it been? It's been fun. It's been challenging. As you can see right here, you look at the video right now. I mean, I have to work hard. To get good at it, and so uh, it's been fun, though. I've had a lot of lot of uh, encouragement by by Cheryl, my partner. Uh, she's been a great instructor, and so you know I've just been trying to take it in and soak up as much knowledge uh, as I possibly can. What advice did Jerry Rice give you? He told me it was going to be hard. He said, uh, "E, be prepared to practice a minimum of three to six hours a day," and that I have been prepared to do. And so I've been having a good time doing it, loving it, and uh, you know it is hard at times. I'm learning the cha-cha, I'm learning the, the quick step. So far, the quick step has been the hardest to learn. 
Can you show us something, Emmett? You got anything oh, for me? No. Uh, so can you show me a step, anything? No, I'm Pressure. reserving all my steps for Tuesday night when I need America to call in and vote for me and Cheryl. So. Now, you never danced when you scored a touchdown, so where'd you get this ability you know, from? I've always had it. It's just that in my sport, it wasn't necessary. This is a dancing event, so it's every bit of necessary and it's every bit of required, so. Thank you very much, Thank Emmett. You. Good luck, Brent. Well, I thought maybe Emmett wanted to go on for another minute with that promo. Then he <laughs> lateral off to the... I thought maybe... You know, I hate to interrupt you, Emmett, where there's a football game breaking out. Uh, that Selvin, uh, he picked up uh, 17 yards on... Uh, on that and uh, so uh, let me uh, just remind you that uh, Emmett will be dancing with the stars and that's live Tuesday at 8 7 central only on ABC big shoot to fill there Jerry Rice performance <laughs> second down under the letter whatever you say <laughs> Is that inside shuffle pass off to Charles? Be short of the first down. Larry Grant, the Juco All American linebacker, number six, says Jim Trussell continues to use a lot of manpower down here in Austin. Mac, Mac jokingly said to me, There's one thing wrong with this game. We're not playing it at high noon. Out here in the heat and humidity. He said, We got to play this game at night. Third down and four yards for the Horns, who trail it by 10. And that stat right there really helps the young quarterback, Texas' ability to run the football. But I think they're going to have to throw the football right here, Kirk, on third and four. Flared, picked up, nothing doing. And a nice read. Donald Washington was over there and Antonio Smith. Antonio Smith actually read the play and went out with the running back. And the young quarterback hung his tailback. Selvin Young out a little bit right here. And you see Washington right there break on the football. Fortunately, Kirk, that ball wasn't jarred out of there. Antonio Smith has had a big night tonight for the Ohio State defense. He showed blitz, recognized that he thought the throw would go out to the flat, to the back, and got back over there to help Donald Washington out. Antonio, Antonio Smith, a great story, first, excuse me. First team charge timeout. So our first timeout uh, in the second half, and again, that's something that Mac Brown didn't want. He did not want a timeout used because the change in the timing rules, he wanted to take all three to the fourth quarter. So right now, for the defending national champions and the favorites in this game, things are really not going their way. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Chevrolet, America's brand. Chevy, an American revolution. Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. And Nike Gridiron. The Ohio State Buckeyes lost in the fourth quarter a year ago in Columbus. But right now here in Austin, Texas, they lead 17 to 7. A after the timeout, Johnson and Ginn going to let this. I'll tell you, we've seen some outstanding punting on both sides here tonight. Two very, very powerful legs. Let's go to New York now and John Saunders. John. Well, Brent, it's time now for the prime time pulse. You can see Georgia right now over South Carolina. They push that lead to 18 0. Fresno straight over Oregon, 3 0. But it's early in that contest. That's your prime time pulse. All right, back to you. All right, John, and here at 17 7, the Buckeyes. Now, Fresno State hosting Oregon. There aren't many fellas that are willing to go in and play them. In their home territory. That will be one to keep an eye on as it unfolds here throughout the night. Pittman into the middle, and Bobino, who's been very solid at linebacker, makes the stop. Troy Smith is starting to gain a reputation for performing well in the big games. You can see tonight he's off to a great start.
You go back to think about the way he played against Michigan twice, playing against Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl, coming into this game. He's played his best in the big games, completing 69% of his passes with five touchdown passes and two touchdown runs with 377 yards of total offense in those big games. He continues that trend tonight in a big one, obviously, here in Austin. Second and eight. Pittman for the first down, a powerful running play. Now, Troy Smith, let's go back to a year ago because Justin Zwick do, drew the start in Columbus. And there are many, many fans around the Midwest who believe that if number 10 had been the starting quarterback that night and had played every snap, that they would have won the game. Now, Smith himself points out not so fast, my friends, because it was Zwick who threw the pass that the tight end dropped. And wasn't that a painful drop in the end zone? That might have been game, set, and match. Buckeyes win it. But Troy Smith has matured as an individual off the field as well as on. He was at the Elite 11 quarterback camp in California, and he made a tremendous impression on the youngsters out there. He stood in front of them and said, look, I made a mistake. And I paid for it. I took money when I shouldn't have. I want you fellas to listen now to somebody who went the wrong way. And don't you make that same mistake. It was a powerful, powerful speech. And I cannot tell you how impressive Troy Smith has become off the field around Columbus. When you go talk to him and you look back to the days and you give Jim Trestle and this coaching staff so much credit for the maturation of Troy Smith. And now Bob Davey would probably put him at the top of his Heisman ballot. <laughs> I think everybody in the world would right now. I got Trent, I got Brent casting my vote for me right here. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do that now. <laughs> we got a little flag time down there now. False start, 75 offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. I think Troy Smith has been the difference in the game because of the way he's been able to spread it around. Anthony Gonzalez early, Ted again had the big play before the half, and you look at the results, but I think it's the leadership, something you can't always see are the intangibles of a quarterback on the road, number one against number two, because he has a calming effect on the rest of the team, not just the offense, but the entire team. Second and 15, and this is well short of the, the first down. That's Brian Robisky, his third catch of the night. I'll tell you something I've really been impressed with is just the overall team speed of how Ohio State has matched up against Texas. We knew Ohio State had some individual guys that could run Kirk, but just as a team, I thought Texas would have the speed advantage. I have not seen that tonight. Well, especially on defense. We, you knew with so many players returning on offense, Ohio State was pretty gifted on that side of the ball. But the way their young defense has flown around tonight has been very impressive. Third and nine. Incomplete. Buckeyes up on. The young receiver, number 80, Ryan Robisky, whose dad is a coach at the Cleveland Browns. Wow. You have to make that catch on third and nine. That would have been a huge conversion. But this guy's a young, no, they, talented I was gonna receiver. Say, they they really like Robisky, the future that he has. But as a young player, what big, big play there on third and long. And at some point, Texas, who has led the country in block kicks over the last five years, don't take for granted punt protection right now. How it is. The pastor has been solid. I mean, he can really hang a punt. Ross is back inside the 15-yard line. That one came out of the clouds. So it is Saturday Night Football on ABC. Tonight, Austin, Texas. Next Saturday, Los Angeles. John Saunders in New York with our Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Congratulations to the Detroit Shock. They win their second WNBA championship in four years, beating Sacramento. And our good friend Swoon Cash gets a title. And Maria Sharapova wins the U.S. Open and claims her second major title. Brent, back to you. Pretty one, John. That's nice. She won that. Won Wimbledon title a few years ago. Good for her. 4-5, 17-7. 
Bob Davy and Kirk Herb Street, Lisa Salters. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along now. One versus two, and number two with the lead here. I should say number one with the lead, 17 7. Texas was number one after they won it all. Roseburg. Charles, the running back. Staying alive. Powerful run. And for those of you who may have just joined us, there were two very key defensive plays turned in by Lauren Ides, Coach Davis. And Brent, this first one, as Texas is pounding on the goal line, was just a great effort play. This is the first play of the second half on offense for Texas. James Laurinaitis steps in front and gets the interception. Two huge game, two huge plays now. And with the loss of Bobby Carpenter, Anthony Schlegel, and of course, A.J. Hawk, they needed somebody to see who would emerge as the leader in a big game, and so far it's been Laurinaitis. On second and one, the youngster again for the Texas first down. They move to change, and uh, the one thing that Texas has not been able to do tonight finish what they started only their one long scoring drive behind Colt McCoy otherwise they have struggled and you think back a year ago of just putting the ball in Vince Young's hands when it's a 17-7 game and you're down kind of uncharted waters right now for this offense first down and 10 for McCoy Runs over to the right to buy time. Incomplete, and they lose it down. Had a shot at it downfield that time, and that was Jermichael Finley, the talented future tight end here. And uh, let me go back now to the, the Vince Young story, because after the Rose Bowl, let's remember that Vince said, I was coming back to school. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it again. And uh, the coaching staff said, yeah, we might have Vince for one more year. And... Uh, then there was a phone call. Mac Brown told us, and uh, Vince said, Coach, I'd like to come over and see you. And Mac said, Sure, come on over, Vince. And uh, Mac said, I, I looked out the front door and I saw the white limo pull up and the door open, and I knew <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> that was it. You think Mac's heart sunk a little bit when he saw that limo pull up? Yeah, limo, that's true. <laughs> Second and ten. Selvin Young and Laurenitis. Back over to make the stop, number 33. Of course, at the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game, and isn't Laurenitis a candidate for the Buckeyes? And to honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each University General Scholarship Fund. Laurenitis and Troy Smith are having a pretty good internal battle for the uh, Buckeye Award here tonight. Brent, Bob, and I were talking at the break. Where is Lima Swede gone? They have not tried to get their most talented wide receiver the football. Maybe here on third down, they try to look for him isolated against an Ohio State corner. Three down for the Bucks. Third and five. Wide open penalty flag. Penalty flag. Thrown by the linesman. Coming back. Things have not gone right for the defending national champions here tonight. What makes it really difficult, it's going to put them in about a third and 15 situation. Holding, 79 offense, 10 yard penalty, previous spot. Still third down. Big Tony Hills, the only new starter on the offensive line for Texas, was a tight end. Right there, he grabs the jersey of number one, Marcus Freeman. Tony Hills making his, one of his few starts that he's had an opportunity, but he did play quite a bit last year, filling in for Jonathan Scott in this game against Ohio State. And that's the first flag thrown against the Longhorn. Six penalties against the Buckeyes for 40 yards tonight. Third and 15. Drops off the screen. Charles cuts off a blocker, but uh, well short of the first down. That's exactly what Greg Davis 
wanted to avoid getting off schedule with the down and distance with a young quarterback. You want to avoid second and eight, second and nine, third and 11, third and 13. Really gives you no opportunity to have a long drive, coach. Penalties, and I think it's key right now for Texas. Mac Brown, get that offense together over there. Get Colt McCoy around his teammates because right now you sense the lack of confidence in that Texas offense. Goes back to the, the interception to start the half. Fourth down and four, and Gonzalez will join up with Jen. Johnson trying to kick it away from him, and this is by far his worst punt of the night, but it takes a huge Texas bounce, and Gens got it on a big hop. And down short of the 20-yard line. But a reminder that the season premiere of Gray's Anatomy coming up Thursday, September 21st, 9, 8 Central. Make a move with TV's hottest doctors to a new season and a new night. Gray's Anatomy. Part of our sellout crowd, there's upwards of 20 some thousand fans who came down here from the state of Ohio. Some of them are over at the Irwin Center. They bought out the basketball arena over there, and uh, I'm sure they're excited watching this game on the big screen over there. I think there's been some huge cheers. And Troy Smith has led the Buckeyes to the lead, and now Maurice Wells. You get a series of downs here, number 34, Michael Griffin. One of the Griffin twins makes a stop. Kirk, see Ohio State brought their band down here. One benefactor gave $225,000 to pay for the band's expenses. That was really nice of you to do. Oh, oh me. That band really yeah. appreciates. I, I tell you what, in Columbus, there's Woody Hayes, there's Archie Griffin, and there's the best damn band in the land, and that's about to pick the pecking order right there. So you and Spielman went together <laughs> yeah, okay. for the $225,000. Gotcha. That's it? <laughs> Uh, score one for the coach. <laughs> seven. He got seven. Into the third. And Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines returns after this message and word from our ABC stations. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. And tonight's area coverage brought to you by Outback Steakhouse as you look down here at Texas Memorial Stadium. Darrell Royal Field. The legendary coach in attendance here tonight. Sellout crowd, and the Horns have struggled. 17-7, they trail the Buckeyes. They pulled it out a year ago in the fourth quarter in Columbus. Troy Smith incomplete, looking for Gonzalez, who's had the hot hand for the Bucks tonight. Seven catches, 122 yards, and a score for number 11. Well, the last two incompletions by Troy Smith were dropped passes by the wide receivers. The receivers have had a good night, but it's one-on-one -on -one again. Ohio State spreading the Texas defense and secondary all over the field. One-on-one -on -one opportunity that time by Anthony Gonzalez to make a big play. Right in his hands, he just dropped the ball. Matthew McConaughey has come down from his luxury box to the sideline and trying to whip up the home table. <laughs> <laughs> Must have a new role there. Oh, right there. Beard going. <laughs> Here's Troy on the move. He'll just hike it out of bounds over there on that far sideline. Eddie George, of course, the Buckeyes' last Heisman Trophy winner, is in attendance, and so too is Chris Carter, their outstanding wide receiver. And there you see, uh, look down at Eddie George there. He was their last Heisman Trophy winner. And uh, I think there's uh, Eddie moved on up the way. There's Chris. He and Eddie were, uh, were together for a while. You really feel like Texas needs a spark in the kicking game to turn this game around. Booming a punt. Fielded by Ross. Short of the 40 yard line. Let's take a look at the Pack Life game summary here, Kirk. 
Well, it's been a, a multiple of things, but of course, it's been Troy Smith. He's been the difference in this game, making big plays here. This is the biggest play, probably right before the half, finding Teddy again isolated, going to the audible, making the play, but also the defense. Laronitis with a big hit, one of the turnovers that Ohio State's been able to force, and they've been able to put pressure on the quarterback, Colt McCoy, this time not seeing Laronitis, throwing it right into his chest early in the second half for a pick. Ohio State's had the upper hand because of the experience, and their young defense has played very well against Colt McCoy. So that's your Pacific Life game summary. 14-20. And Texas needs to get something going. You know, beautiful throw that time by McCoy. And there is Lima Swede. And I don't think he's caught one since the second quarter. That time, Texas did a nice job of protecting the quarterback, Colt McCoy, giving him time to look into the coverage. He saw one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he made a great throw for a first down for Texas. This is what they needed to start the drive. He had an open receiver underneath that he decided to pass on, and Finley gets the big throw downfield. 19 yards, comes in underneath. For a, uh, short gain to Cosby. Should mention Texas going no huddle. A lot of times you see a team go to the no huddle to try to create some tempo to get up, get to the line of scrimmage, less thinking, try to become the aggressor with the play caller. It's interesting with Texas no huddle shotgun. There's no snap count. This is all done on a silent snap. When the ball moves, Texas moves. There's the inside handoff. Tough run by Selvin Young for the first down. And can the Horns finish this drive off and make a stand here? Very important for Greg Davis not to abandon the run. Nice balanced attack. Got a big throw by Colt McCoy downfield. Now you get to continue to mix it up and be aggressive with a play calling. But don't go away from Selvin Young and Jamal Charles and their threat of running the football. Going for it all. Swede grabs it. And a battle. Let's see. They're going to wave it off incomplete. We'll take a look at the uh, at the replay. They ruled incomplete. Did not have possession. The two officials right there. You saw a good picture of them looking to each other. Boy, we've said when are they going to get the football to Lima Swede. This time they try to take advantage of his great size at 6 feet 5 going up and over Malcolm Jenkins, the best cover corner for Ohio State. Malcolm Jenkins actually takes the ball away from Lima Swede, and then when they fell to the ground, nobody had possession. They, by the time they did, they're out of bounds. And Lima Swede that time got away, Kirk, with putting his left hand on Malcolm Jenkins' shoulder and tugging him down a little bit. <laughs> but what a great effort by Swede. Excellent coverage by Malcolm Jenkins. He deserves all the credit in the world on that play. Second down and ten. Sticking with the conservative call after going for all of it. Uh, so in this sequence, Marcus Freeman and Lauren Itis making the stop for the Buckeyes. This will put them in third and long. Neither team having a lot of success tonight against good defenses on third and third down. Ohio State two of nine and Texas only two of seven. Again, the young quarterback, how does he handle this situation here, Coach, on third and long? Uh, and keep in mind, Vince Young's not here, Kirk, but Texas has won 21 straight ball games. This team ain't going to go away now. Down by 10, they would even take a field goal in this situation if they get a little bit closer now. They're going to drop it off to incomplete as Selvin Young looked downfield and dropped it. Let's see if they're going to try a long one with Johnson. I think I see Greg coming onto the field. He's out of Georgia. Remember, transferred here from Vanderbilt. He was a freshman All-American. Brent, really good decision by Colt McCoy. You can see that he looked downfield. He wanted to squeeze it into Finley, the tight end. But because Ohio State dropped the defensive end, Golston, it opened it up to the outside. If, if Selvin Young makes that catch, he has a shot at a first down. Jordan Shipley is the holder. This is a 45-yarder. No good. Not even close. And a big miss at the 12-18 mark of the fourth quarter because they stayed back by two scores. The hole was fine. Just pulled it off to the right.
with that strong performance by Notre Dame, the vote following this game and the two polls is going to be interesting. If this stays, you would expect Texas to drop a couple of spots. But does USC move to two, or does Notre Dame jump back up? The vote this week going to be very interesting. And the Buckeyes go to work on the clock, which brings up something that Mac Brown dislikes intently, and that is the clock starts after a change of possession. So down by two scores now with 11.50 to go. You know, Bob Davey, you have been there, the pressure that this puts on your offense when you're trying to play catch up. And particularly because, Brent, Ohio State has the ability to play with a fullback in the game, line up and run the ball. Here they're going back to their normal one-back spread. But Ohio State can pound it a little bit. They're not just a conventional spread offense. But with Troy Smith and his experience, would not be surprised to see them continue to be aggressive even as the clock dwindles down. Second and nine. Putting it into Ginn's hands. Can Ginn get the first down? He does. First down for the Buckeyes, and a penalty flag is thrown further downfield. The one point that we must make here tonight, the Longhorns have missed Terrell Brown. The organization's done a great job. Number 31 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Tacked on the end of the run. The play resulted. Ross has had his hands full with Ted Ginn here tonight. Well, Ross has been isolated a lot tonight on number seven for Ohio State. They called the incidental face mask. We're going to add five yards on against uh, Texas, but you have to go back to the play call. Second and long. You're thinking that they may want to try to run some clock. It just shows you how much confidence they, they have in Troy Smith making throws and making good decisions that they can still be aggressive and now maybe get back to running the football. The pros believe that Terrell Brown is the best corner here at Texas, even though he doesn't have blinding speed and he's missing tonight, suspended. They come back to Gonzalez over there, and Smith is moving the ball through the air. And, you, and what a senior quarterback, a guy that's been through all that Troy Smith does for you, the confidence of Jim Tressel to throw this football here. A lot of confidence. We've seen it now two plays in a row, but again, it's going back to Brent's point. It's Brandon Foster, the young corner who steps in for Terrell Brown. We've seen it all night, whether it's been Brandon Foster, Ryan Palmer, the Griffin brothers isolated. Ohio State's taking advantage of matchups away from Aaron Ross to try to exploit this Texas defense without uh, Terrell Brown. And we talk a lot about Vince Young, but let's not forget Vince. Let's not forget he had help defensively. Huff is with the Raiders. Griffin's with the Vikings. And here, Pittman is just shredding that horn defense for another first and ten. So there are so many key players missing from this Longhorn team. Very, very impressive drive here by Ohio State. Blocking downfield by the receivers. Top hard running by Antonio Pittman. But it's again the way they're able to mix up the play calling here late in the football game when you're expecting them to be conservative. They continue to attack. And again, it's the confidence that they have in the quarterback, Troy Smith. TJ Downing, the offensive guard, a great block, Kirk, on that play. Ball start, 75 offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Brent, how impressive this is. When you put it in perspective, Mack Brown, 44-3 and three at home in this stadium. He lost two games in 1999, his second year, 44-3 and three in Austin. It's like he took a shot tonight. Yes. He, he's working hard tonight. This is a real struggle. You know, he had a uh, knee replacement on that left knee. And watching him in practice, he had to use a golf cart. He's had a little bit of hard time moving around. And I'm sure it's uh, it's difficult standing down there on the sideline, especially the way they're playing. There's the penalty flag thrown by the umpire. And you all know what that means on this play. 9.33. The Buckeyes working on that clock. Penalty obviously moves Ohio State back. Second penalty in a row. As we continue to talk about Terrell Brown, it's not just physically losing Terrell Brown. It's miscommunication in that secondary. Every time they're dropping back to throw, they're open receivers downfield. 
Holding, Holding. Offense. offense number 50. 50. 10, yards. 10 yards, previous spot. Still first down. And that's Doug Daddish, the senior center from Warren, Ohio. Earlier it was the sophomore tackle, Alex Boone, and uh, moved over to that left tackle spot. Daddish moved off of it to center. And uh, so Boone has not graded out as an A tonight, but he has a tremendous upside. He was at uh, one of the very top offensive linemen in that class that was recruited. Both of these schools recruit so many, so many outstanding football players. First and 25. The toss to Pittman. Trying to stay in bounds. The clock continues to run. There comes the penalty flag and a face mask. Roderick McElroy grabbing the face mask. Number 38, you can see him shaking his head, knowing what happened. Well, if it's a personal foul, they're going to be kicking themselves after Ohio State had two miscues with penalties of their own. Personal foul, yeah. wow. face mask, number 38 on the defense. 15 yards, tacked on the end of the run. Automatic, first down. McElroy gets out there, but he holds on to that face mask of Pittman and pulls. Anytime you pull and there's an official there, it's not only a face mask, but it's 15 yards in the first down. And the freshman, Roderick McElroy, Kirk, getting the start tonight because the junior Drew Kelson couldn't go, but that is a huge, huge personal foul. Ohio State was almost back to the point where they were probably ready to settle maybe for a field goal. But now the first down. In the hands of Pittman, plowing straight ahead. Last year, of course, the, let me check that. That was Chris Wells, the uh, the fine uh, freshman running back. There he is right there. So let me correct myself. Uh, Chris, the freshman from Akron, Ohio, and uh, didn't the Akron team today do itself proud against North Carolina State? Uh, now we uh, see that Pittman has uh, come on to the field and replaced him. Imagine in Akron in a neighborhood where you have in the same area Chris Wells, Antonio Pittman, and Tyrell Sutton all playing in the same Pee Wee League. There's some talent growing up in Akron, Ohio. Indeed, Sutton, a great runner at Northwestern. Second down and eight. Deflected incomplete. And that was Brian Robison doing what he does best. One of the more athletic defensive linemen in the country jumping up and knocking it down. And Jim Trussell now the third and eight checking that that playbook and uh, he usually is lethal in a situation like this. He knows how to use a clock. He's very conservative and as Kirk pointed out he's got the added advantage of a veteran quarterback. He can put up high percentage passes in this situation. Let's see what Trestle and Troy Smith come up with here. We're going to throw for it. First down, Buckeyes inside the 10 yard line. And number 80, Brian Robisky, the sophomore. Cleveland makes the play in the first down. And you have to love that Brian Robisky, Kirk comes back after dropping the ball on the critical third down earlier. And how about the confidence to throw the ball again in that situation? Troy Smith, the confidence, they're aggressive again, but going back, I hate to continue to pound on this, but Brandon Foster, Griffin, we've seen that this time, falling down as he's in coverage in a big third down play. Brandon Foster just lost his footing and it allowed Robisky to pick up the first down. In a handoff and battling for the goal line. Antonio Pittman, the ball carrier. It'll be second down and a goal. And you would think the way things have gone here tonight, if Trestle and the Buckeyes can score seven here, it would be game, set, and match. Still got seven minutes to go. Lots of things can happen. But the Texas offense has not been explosive here tonight. Nine plays, 70 yards, over five minutes off the clock, mixing the run with the throw. It's the advantage in college football of having a quarterback that can make good decisions and give you that trust to call any play you want. Deontay Johnson, the fullback, trying to drop the hammer. For the end zone, they want the signal. Nothing yet. On the game. 
touchdown, Antonio Pittman. And the Buckeye Nation has this one in hand now. It would take a Texas miracle to pull this out. Play great effort here, Brent. Inside here, just a good push by the offensive line. Some penetration by Killebrew, but hard running that time. And he gets the push, and Pittman shows he has the toughness when he gets down to the goal line to get his ball into the end zone. Now, this is one that they should review to take a look to make sure that the ball broke the plane as the officials come in. And remember, Mac Brown cannot challenge it. He'd already used his challenge. Petri tacks on the extra point. 24-7. So we go back to the point we made earlier in this game. You want to take that challenge to the fourth quarter. Even if you were going to lose it, make sure you got it just in case. Troy Smith and the Buckeyes have this one well under control. 24-7 dominated you go back to the key play in this game and it well could be Laurenitis forcing a fumble very early in the game but it looked like the Longhorns were going to strike and Eddie George the last of the Heisman Trophy winners enjoying this one down on the sideline having a little fun with the Texas fans why not <laughs> and, and one thing all those NFL players say and the Texas players were talking about this yesterday all those guys in the NFL call back and say look the best time you're ever going to have is when you're in college. Exactly. No doubt about it. Justin Blaylock, the right tackle who we're going to see coming out here. Uh, he certainly talked to Roy Williams, he told us. And uh, that's one of the reasons why he came back. 24-7. 6.27 to go. Number one in control, the Ohio State Buckeyes. And they're going to be challenged for a title all the way this year. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, the low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. Next Generation Thinking, brought to you by the Nissan Versa. And Allstate, are you in good hands? Tonight's area of coverage has been brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. Mac Brown told us a little anecdote about the President of the United States, President Bush. He's a big, big Texas fan, and he likes to go to bed early at night, and the Rose Bowl was still unfolding. He tried to go off with about seven minutes to go, and he got up, and he had to watch the rest of the game. And I dare say tonight in the White House, he's tucking himself in, <laughs> folks. 24-7 now with six minutes to go. You know, what, what concerns you if you're a Texas fan is not only losing this football game, but look at the production that they've had in the past under Mac Brown. And a lot of that had to do with the way they were able to get it done with Vince Young and being very versatile. But I, the thing that I've seen tonight, playing at home, they didn't show as much fire and intensity as they played with last year. Now, we're going to say that's all because of Vince Young? I don't know. They were shut out by Oklahoma and it was last not last year but the year before in 2004 I believe it was 12 nothing in the uh, Red River shootout and uh, don't anybody dare give up on the Longhorns let me, let me just say this right now there's some football players down there they had a they had a cornerback suspended they got another little youngster over there at quarterback that's pretty good they got some talented football players here. They ran up against a buzzsaw tonight that's been waiting for a year to hammer back for that tough, tough loss up in Columbus. These Buckeyes are going to be challenging for a national championship, and Longhorn just had their hands full. They were just outmatched here tonight. That's all. You'd lose one, and you go on to the next one. And I think we really have to talk about this Ohio State defense. I know, Kirk, you live in Columbus, obviously. They were uptight coming down here because this young defense last week gave up a lot of yards to Northern Illinois. But they have played outstanding. And that guy right there, number 33, 
go back to that play early in the game. That was the game-changing play, Lauren I just causing that fun. The other thing coming into this game is the Ohio State coaches felt that they, they were kind of assuming things, how this team would react, but they really didn't know because they've never been in this kind of situation. All of a sudden, after the game, players start to surface, leadership starts to surface, and the man that you just mentioned, James Laronitis, all of a sudden starts to become one of the anchors for the Ohio State defense. Almost blocked. I mean, they almost picked that one. And uh, they're going to have great field position as a result. One of, the, one of the great streaks in college football is coming to an end, and it's not Mac Brown's winning streak, folks. We'll talk about Gene Chizik. 29 straight wins as a defensive coordinator when we come back. As you look down on, uh, for the large part, a very disappointed crowd. We remind you that uh, over on Sports Center, we'll have full post-game coverage from Austin when it ends. Uh, Randy Moss has issues with Coach. I mean, that shocks us, doesn't it, folks? <laughs> Last race before the chase. They come down the stretch in NASCAR. You won't be taking any. Art Shell's not taking any lift from anybody. I'm telling you that right now. And, uh, we start to go to work uh, on the uh, on the clock here with the the youngster Chris Wells and uh, Kirk. You've watched him back in the scrimmage back in sure. Columbus. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about that. Future star, superstar. He, he came in a little bit early, had a chance to go through his spring ball. Talking to him, he said, "You know, it, it, my head was spinning. There was so much going on with learning new terminology, adjusting to the speed of the game." He said, "I I just wasn't ready." And he said, "Right in the middle of two a days, the light went on. I started to emerge and feel more." comfortable kind of like I did in high school and now the tandem of Antonio Pittman and Chris Wells gives Jim Tressel the best tailbacks he's had since he's been at Ohio State. Here he comes uh, stopped by the Gene Chiswick coached defense and uh, of course if you're not aware there he is 29 consecutive games he was the defensive coordinator in the unbeaten season at Auburn came in here last year and he is a future head coach waiting to happen anyone at the end of this season interested in a coach should and he's not trust me he didn't ask me to say this he's one of the most impressive assistants you'd ever want to be around and he is the full package for some for some organization and uh, who knows maybe they'll uh, they'll keep him right here in Austin but he is a wonderful wonderful coach and Bob Davey I don't have to tell you what it's like for a coordinator to be on the winning side 29 straight times. That's just phenomenal. And the thing you like There's about Gene Chiswick, he's humble. He tells you he was at a great program Scott at Gary. Auburn. Exactly. It has a bunch of good defensive players with Tommy Tuberville, and he comes in here to Texas and he inherited the same thing. But you're right, 29 okay, straight right. wins is an amazing step. But I love is how he downplays it. We want to come in and we all want to talk in the media about his streak and he said, you know, it's it's about the players. It's not about me. As coach just said, he's been around a lot of great players and a team that believes in his philosophy and that's helped him to become a great coordinator, future great head coach. You know what's amazing to me? Ohio State now, how talented are they? They had five first round draft picks last year that left this program, correct? And nine overall draft picks. Yep. to come down here and do what they did tonight with a well, young football team. Buckeyes will use a timeout here with 141. The end is near. And uh, TCU will have the uh, longest win streak when this one ends. 11 straight wins. Ohio State of West Virginia would have nine. <laughs> Twenty-four seven and uh, Kirk, you just handed me a great note here. If Texas doesn't score the first time ever that a number one has gone on the road and held a number two to single digits. Team breaking in nine new defensive starters. Goes on the road, holds Texas so far to 284 yards of total offense and seven points. An impressive and amazing feat by this Ohio State defense. We've talked a lot about Gene Chiswick, but Jim Haycock on the other side defensive coordinator what a great job for Ohio State well today's Chevrolet players of the game there they are the two quarterbacks Troy Smith Colt McCoy Troy had a huge night 259 yards and uh, and two touchdowns and the recognition of their effort Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund what a big night for Troy Smith and the Buckeyes we may have 
differing opinions up here about the Heisman after two weeks. But the reason Troy Smith is a Heisman candidate over his own teammate, Ted, again, is because the way he provides leadership and because the, his hands are on the football every single play for this Ohio State offense. And, and my thoughts go to Colt McCoy, a happy-go-lucky kind of bright-eyed guy. Everything's going great. Everything's going wonderful. He will now find out what it's like to be a major college quarterback in a place like Austin because I don't care how much they love the name, the heat will start to happen right now on this kid. We'll find out how he responds after this game. What was the name of the town? Tuscola. He went from Tuscola to all of a sudden the big stage. So we uh, want to take a quick look at the ESPNU All-State Standings Review because I mentioned earlier, Notre Dame's going to jump a very, very impressive win. USC could jump up to number two. We'll be out there in the Coliseum, Nebraska, USC. Next All right, Kirk, you got to vote. What are your thoughts? I, I probably, I'm going to, I'm going to keep Ohio State obviously one, but I, I'm, <laughs> Notre Dame was two for me last week. So Notre Dame for me will be two and then USC at three with Auburn at four. I got to teach him how to promote the upcoming game, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're leading me towards USA? Yes. USC. Are you going to team me up on USA there, now? Go there's, Trojans. You know, there's some things that Lee Corso hasn't taught him yet. You know, <laughs> I, 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 tease I, there? There's a first down and self and young out to the uh, This was great fun this week. And uh, I'll tell you, Kirk, nobody works any harder in college football than you. I can't believe uh, your schedule. And, Bob, uh, we look forward to to uh, seeing you out on the West Coast. I think we had great, great fun with this. It's such a wonderful staff to deal with. Folks, I'm at practice the other day waiting for Max to come out. Here comes the golf cart. And guess who's sitting next to him? There's Bob Davis down over there. He and the coach are coming to practice together. That was pretty good. That day. <laughs> yeah, until you pushed me out and yanked me out and jumped on the cart. <laughs> There's the swing incomplete now. So Troy Smith is the hero of the night. And uh, boy, he's put together some great games. It's just, it's wonderful to see this uh, this progress of a young man. You know, some 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 youngsters don't make it; they fall by the wayside for whatever variety of reasons. And uh, but this this young man hung in there, took his punishment, came back better than ever. It's terrific. Start looking at the big picture now for Ohio State. It's a non-conference game. You know, conference games always matter. But you start thinking about. A chance to maybe run the table and they have some big big games coming up on the road later that we'll probably have a chance to see him playing you bet and uh, they'll have a dandy to go down to Iowa City there's there's a back with a great future huh Charles has got that little burst Bob it won't be long before he takes one to the house again somebody they play rice I believe don't they next week? Yeah, you know what's great about him is you think about him being a, a track guy running a 10 100 but he doesn't play foot he's a football player who happens to show up and he is able to run at 10 1. He is not a, a track guy. He is a tough football player. Well, they found another star linebacker, didn't they? Sure did. Liz McCoy and Laurinaitis is there. Pops will be proud of him tonight. Kirk, you played in a lot of big games. You agree, agree with me. Nothing is more fun. And to come into an environment like this and you've got your little group of 4,000 fans and enjoy this victory on the road this is about as good as it gets as a football player or a coach to come into this stadium like this, and win this especially game. after the way Ohio State and Texas had a classic last year in Columbus and you felt that the winner had a shot to get to the national title and the Longhorns eventually won I think that's been burning the fans and the, to the team to get back to have an opportunity to play Texas and now to have the upper hand after last year you probably see a pretty good celebration with the 4,000 fans in the corner when the clock goes off. There's a lot of classy fans down here. I talked to some Buckeyes who traveled down here and they said the folks have been awful nice to them and then they walked around the streets of Austin and uh, they've had a good time playing the band down in here and there. There you are part of the Buckeye Nation and over at the Irwin Center. I'm sure they've enjoyed it on the big screen over there. Athletic director Gene Smith, uh, he was the host for a big group that came down here. And they just had a wonderful time. And, of course, winning the football game. Well, that's just frosting, folks. And there's a penalty. That might have been a face mask. I don't know. Uh, we'll hang on to Selvin Young. Cut across the field. Looking to pick up a block. And he's to the 23 with the uh, final seconds right there. And Anderson Russell making the stop. 
But again, I, there was a penalty flight throw. That was holding. Well, I was wrong about that. I thought there might have been a hand right there. But so Mac Brown and, and his staff will go back to work. He's still got uh, got plenty, plenty left on the table. And one thing about losing early, you can gain some ground. You don't want to be losing late this BCS thing. But early, you can come back a little bit. But well, we're going to find out how good Texas is in the coming weeks. It's a much, much tougher schedule this year than what they had a year ago. And if, if Terrell Brown affected this team on defense, that's one thing. But personally, I want to see the fire. I want to see the intensity and the leadership that this team played with last year because tonight it wasn't on display. All I can say, folks, is that Ohio State came to Austin and messed with Texas. There's a handshake. Let's go to Lisa. Great. Great. Hey, good job. Thanks, Brent. Troy, it turns out that the difference in the game was that touchdown that you guys scored late in the, in the first half. What did you see on that defense that made you audible? Uh, it was, a you know, just basic calls all day uh, involving their safety. Uh, that was a great play, but the whole game was a good game. You know, without the guys up front doing a great job, I think we only allowed one sack today, and that was huge. It was, it was them up front. Now, knowing that one of their key corners was suspended for this game, how were you able to just pick apart their secondary? You know, I can't, I can't say enough, you know, more than, you know, it's our game plan. It's our coaching. It's the coaching staff. They put in endless, endless hours of film study, and, you know, we, be, we are in there with them also, but it's our staff. You know, they do a great job. After that heartbreaking loss in Columbus last year, what's it like for you to get this one here on their turf now? Oh, no. It's, it's not a revenge thing. You know, any and every win that we get during the course of the season is a good win. All right. Thanks a lot. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Brent. Thank you, Lisa. Troy Smith, a serious Heisman candidate now, as he leads the Buckeyes to a 24-7 victory in Austin, Texas. And a reminder now to tune into Sports Center on ESPN if you missed any of the scores and highlights from earlier in the day. Get caught up with everything. And a reminder also, join us next week. Saturday Night Football on ABC will feature Nebraska versus USC from the Los Angeles Coliseum. And here tonight, folks, it was the thrill of it for the Ohio State Buckeyes. knock football game in the Lone Star to back here at home where hard hats are optional. As always this week on Buckeye Football Weekly, we've got the sounds of the band and we will move right on with Buckeye profiles as well. Quinn Pitcock, a visit from him as well as Tim Schaefer, so we see both sides of the ball. We'll tour the renovations here at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center and we'll go online to CoachTressel.com with a very special guest. It's a Texas-sized show here on Buckeye Football Weekly. Keep it right here. We're up with highlights in just a little bit. Buckeye Football Weekly with Jim Tressel is brought to you by Kroger, Nationwide Insurance, the Ohio State University Medical Center, Sky Bank, Cooper Tires, McDonald's, the Ohio Propane Education and Research Council, the Central Ohio Chevy Dealers, and by the James. Buckeye Football Weekly with a little change of venue this week. It's a big football week, but some big renovations going on here at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, which is where we sit, head coach Jim Tressel. And, Coach, we were here last year to tell some people about what was on tap. This is very exciting because we're, we're wrapping up here. Well, it really is. It's amazing the progress that's been done. 
Uh, we, our first recruiting class in the first weekend of December, we had the ceremonial groundbreaking. Uh, we're into 33,000 square feet of remodeled space. And there's 52,700 square feet that will open in January or February, the finest facility in the land. Well, I mean, there will be probably NFL facilities that won't rival this by a long shot. I don't know that there will be a facility for a while. Someone will have to try to one-up us eventually. But uh, this is extraordinary. When you count this indoor that we're sitting in right now, we've got over 130,000 square feet of space for our guys to to practice and train and rehab and study and relax and uh, everything is here. No reason to be anywhere else. And there are just some awesome football only areas. You talk about the size of the weight room and the fact that it is just for football. Well, you know, I must say that some of the other men's sports that are in here, we do have share it with us a mm -hmm. little bit. Uh, it's turned out as we offer that opportunity for some of the women's sports, most of our stuff is built at the sizes that it's not it's not for the women. They, it, they would rather be in the facilities that have things structured a little bit more for them. But we've got some of the people in this building, the lacrosse team, uh, the baseball team's in here, some working out. Uh, the soccer team works here a little bit. But primarily, uh, at most, two or three are with us. Primarily, it's just our guys. How much consultation did you have? How much input did you have and, and did you want for this? I mean, this is where you're going to live. <laughs> well, that's right. It was a, it was a long committee process. Great help from the university architect's office. Uh, great help from our architects that were hired from the outside, Heary and Associates. Um, our coaches were a part of a committee. Our players were a part of a committee. There were aesthetics committees. There were space committees. Um, if, as you look around the place and see all the things, we even have an office for our coach emeritus, and Coach Bruce and Coach Cooper have a place to call home. And so there's everything we could think of is in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Well, thousands upon thousands of square feet and all high tech. I mean, I love looking at how everything is HD, all your meeting rooms, the drop down screens, everything. That's cool. 39 flat screen TVs in this building. Uh, everywhere you turn. You know, I, I'm tired of uh, watching you on the news. I, every time I turn, <laughs> walk around the corner, you're on the news. But uh, it's incredible. The technology is great for our kids to be able to study themselves, not just uh, watching their football films, but they can watch themselves in an underwater treadmill uh, as they're working on some rehab. They can watch themselves uh, studying their sprinting style or their weightlifting uh, motions. And you name it, it's here. We have no excuse to not get better and better every day. We'll have to get you the remote control for that other problem. But, you know, there's, there's one guy that we can point to who knows a lot about this, and there's one website where if fans at home want to check out and see some of the renovations that are going on, we're going to bring in Ryan Miller right now, CoachTressel.com. And, Ryan, this is a great place to go and see just how the updates are going, and, but that's not all. Well, yeah, and I think it's great because you can see from the very first shovel that was put into the ground uh, when you and Archie and I know uh, Andy Geiger was present at the time and everyone put the shovel on the ground and they started the renovation uh, to today and even going into uh, its completion. Periodically, we take photos and we post them up uh, constantly on CoachTressel.com and you have an opportunity to see the progress and watch uh, as it evolved. Coach was talking about some of those design elements. Yeah. Those design elements are right there on full screen from the architectural firm so you can see what that finished product will look like and then you can see kind of some of the, some of the steel going up and you can kind of see some of the rooms start to come to fruition. You see the defensive meeting room, for example, has some of the NFL jerseys up. And obviously, it gets, uh, if, I'm a, if I'm a kid that has an opportunity to come to Columbus, I don't think I'm going to check out CoachTressel.com and think, no, that's not for me. I yeah. mean, I, this is an opportunity, I think, uh, uh, for a lifetime for a kid to come and, and utilize this facility. It's like the Disney World of college football in here. And, and the performance enhancements are just second to none. I couldn't be more excited as a former Buckeye to see yeah. the upgraded facilities here at the university. And I think one of the important things, interactive. I mean, that's, that's what people look for when they go to these websites. Oh, for sure. And, and when you get an opportunity to go to CoachTressa.com, the photo galleries are immense. It's not just the Woody Hayes renovation, but there's photo galleries specifically of Coach Tressel, uh, specifically of the team fans can send in emails one of the one of the favorites out there is the Buckeye troops and I know coach the the men and women that serve overseas are very important to you and uh, from time to time they'll, they'll send coach some pictures via email and the coach will forward them on and we'll put them on the site so uh, that's a kind of a tribute to uh, what our men and women in the armed forces are doing and, and it's great to see there's just all the great things that are happening with the Ohio State University football program it's just one click away at CoachTressel.com. Just please tell me you're getting him to, to get on the computer, <laughs> www.CoachTressel.com, because, you know, he's... Hey, we've got another picture coming. <laughs> now, listen to this one. We've got two F-16s flying along, one refueling the other, 
and one guy holds up in the cockpit, go Buckeyes. There you and go. we got a new picture coming on, and I'll try to figure out how to get to that <laughs> site. <laughs> to listen, but everybody else knows how to do it. We've got Buckeye profiles still straight ahead and highlights from Texas. Stay with us. Nationwide Insurance is proud to bring you the sounds of the Ohio State University Marching Band. Nationwide Sounds of the Band is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Buckeye Profiles is brought to you by The Huntington. One of only two starters returning to the Buckeye defense this season, Quinn Pitcock is in his third year anchoring the defensive front. Double teamed on almost every down, Pitcock is one of the strongest players on the team, even after shoulder surgery last year. The 6'3", 295-pound defensive tackle from Piqua, Ohio, has a 36-inch vertical leap and says he would not want to play any other position in football. No other position. I put I grew up playing defensive tackle, you know, I've loved playing it ever since, you know, you know, I think it's a tough position to play, very few people can really play it and be great at it, and I really just want to master the art of you know, being in that position. If he wasn't playing football, Quinn would be trying to become the world's strongest man, he says. That is, when he's not off-roading one of his dirt bikes. A consumer affairs major, Quinn considers math and science two of his favorite subjects. When asked about his role model, Quinn didn't hesitate. One person right now, I think, is Coach Trust. I think being here, he's really become, you know, a second father. Just really, I think he... I've, I've always listened to him say how he's a uh, guy's degree in uh, education and he, he would, would love to be here, doesn't want to go to the NFL and be a coach. He wants to educate young men and I've just learned a lot through uh, being around here with him and I think just really looked up uh, to him and just trying to emulate, emulate him later on. Last season, Pitcock had a career-high five tackles against Illinois. He also blocked a punt against Northwestern and recovered a fumble at Minnesota. He would like to be remembered for making a big play against Michigan because, as he says, that's what all the great players are remembered for at Ohio State. Having played on both sides of the ball, Tim Schaefer is back on offense this season, this time at left guard, a position he says has one distinct disadvantage. When you got blitzes coming off the end, you, know, you can't see that. You got you to gotta listen to your tackle. You got to have tackles back. And you got to listen to the center's calls. And, you know, centers can see, like, the whole field. You know, you just got to trust people and listen to people. If Schaefer didn't play football, he says he would have been a basketball player. The 6'5", 290-pound Upper Arlington native played center in high school and compares himself to Shaquille O'Neal, including his free throw shooting ability. As for a role model, Tim says it's his dad. He's always been there for me, like, no matter what. He's always known what to, like, what to do. I can go to him for anything. If I'm ever have a problem or need advice, he's always been there. He's always gave me the, the good advice, and he's real smart. A criminology major, Schaefer would like to go into law enforcement, possibly with the DEA. He would like to be remembered at Ohio State for never giving up. Part of that, just I never gave up, you know. I went back and forth from offense to defense, and I got in a little trouble last year, and I just never, I just never, gave up on I me mean, I'm here like a lot of guys go back and forth from offense defense you know they decided they didn't want to be here anymore a lot of guys got in trouble and they aren't here so I just guess I just want to remember for being able to, I'm, I'm still here Buckeye Profiles is brought to you by the Huntington 
We're back on Buckeye Football Weekly, and head coach Jim Tressel pulled out all the stops, bringing John Cooper, the former Buckeye coach, on the road to Austin as the Buckeyes got set, hitting the field at Memorial Stadium to take on the number two ranked Longhorns of Texas. A showdown to prove who is the best in the country. Ohio State came out firing. That's Ted Ginn Jr. on the receiving end of a big gainer, 46 yards on a second and seven play from the Buckeye 23 yard line. Good pickup and a good drive on the ground. Antonio Pittman, 12 yards for a first down on a second and 10 play. The Buckeyes in business, but defense dominates the first half of this game. Colt McCoy, nowhere to go. James Laurinaitis, what a big game out of him. The tackle for a loss of one. Big play here as the Bucks defense gets stingy at just the right time. Donald Washington scoops up the fumble. And off he goes out to midfield. Ohio State in business when it looked like seven the other way. The Buckeyes ready to go and turn that turnover into points. Up top again, Troy Smith. Anthony Gonzalez pulls this one in for a 25-yard gain. And the Bucks on a second and 12 from the 14-yard line. Gonzalez with a catch and a touchdown. 7-0 Ohio State on top. And Bevo for one didn't like chewing on that. Second quarter action after the score stood seven zip after one and up top goes Colt McCoy 30 yards complete to Selvin Young as he slips out of the backfield for a nice pickup. Then it's Young on the run. He's dropped for a loss loss of a yard on the play as the Buckeye defense converges best throw of the day for Colt McCoy. He got absolutely crushed in the backfield by Vernon Golston but he completes the pass to Lima Swede 14 yards complete. And the Longhorns were in business. That's Jamal Charles. No gain getting hit at the line. But up top goes McCoy into the corner of the end zone. The exact same spot. Anthony Gonzalez hauled his in. Billy Pittman with the catch. And we're tied at seven. An impressive 13-play drive that took seven minutes off the clock and traveled 78 yards. Ohio State right back at it with Gonzalez, a popular target. 14 yards on the pickup. Ted Ginn Jr., number seven pickup of seven and a first down on a third down play some key timing here as the half is drawing to a close this is a stellar catch from Anthony Gonzalez Troy Smith laid it up and he knows he's going to get walloped and he was but a great pickup of 23 yards next up on a first and 10 play with seconds left in the half up top Troy Smith Ted Ginn Jr. and just like that it's a 14 to 7 halftime lead for the Buckeyes just when it looked like it would be deadlocked going to the break. The Bucks come out in the second half looking for some more opportunistic defense and that is exactly how you might describe it. First off Jamal Charles pretty great effort seven yards on the pickup on a second and six and he gets the first down on first and ten from the 31 McCoy to pass James Laurinaitis is wearing a white jersey and he takes this one back on the return to set up the Buckeyes and another scoring effort here. Troy Smith not many times you can have a drive with a negative play seven yards lost on this sack but still points turned in for the Buckeyes. That's because Antonio Pittman rips off on third and 15 a 12 yard run doesn't get enough for the first down but it absolutely puts the Buckeyes into field goal range and bring on Aaron Petrie for the second time of the night. Missed his first effort, looking for a 31-yard field goal, and that is good, and the Buckeyes have turned two turnovers into 10 points and take a 17-7 lead. Heading back to defense for the Buckeyes. Selvin Young on a second and six play. He's off for 17 yards. A big run as Texas would outgain Ohio State in total rushing yardage on the evening. Jamal Charles then takes the pitch. He's got nowhere to go. The Bucks have seen that option a couple times already this evening and they take care of business there with a loss of one on the play. A key third and four for the Longhorns and Selvin Young gets laid out. McCoy put a little air under that pass and it's a loss of six as Young is stopped immediately and the punt team comes out. Back on offense Antonio Pittman. Pittman runs hard for a first down on a second down and eight play from the Buckeye 20. Third and nine. Brian Robiski just about hauls that in. That would have been a key first down grab on a third and nine situation. The Buckeyes, they hold a 17 to 7 lead after three quarters of play. Selvin Young, second and five for Texas. Eight yards. He picks up a first down. 
into the corner of the end zone on a first and 10 play. How about that shot taken on Malcolm Jenkins? But Jenkins and Lima Swede, neither of them can come up with it. That's a big play as the pass falls incomplete because another one would do that. Selvin Young and the Longhorns self-destructing right in front of their very eyes. A 45-yard field goal attempt by Greg Johnson. Sails wide right. No points for their effort on that drive. Ohio State trying to churn out some clock. Time running out on the Longhorns, and the Bucks just keep picking up yardage. That's 12 yards complete to Ted Ginn Jr., plus a face mask penalty added onto that. Anthony Gonzalez on the receiving end of this Troy Smith pass, and he turns this into a nifty 20-yard gain. The Buckeyes working the clock in their favor, making one final decisive drive to put this one away. Antonio Pittman, he rips off a nice run, and Pittman trying to churn out 100 yards on this particular evening, 12 yards on the pickup there. Brian Robisky, pretty huge first down deep into Texas territory that sets up Antonio Pittman. And that's the ball game. Pittman struggles to get in. The officials, after a delayed reaction, give the delayed call. 24 to 7, Ohio State. Winners on the road, ending a 16-game home winning streak for the Longhorns. We're back with Coach Jim Tressel's reaction. Back to wrap up this week's edition of Buckeye Football Weekly. The road version, and what a road game. What a way to start with the white jerseys this year. Well, there's no question about it. Our guys did a good job of winning the special teams. Our defense was relentless, and we always say they have to be. You know, Texas moved the ball a little bit, but our guys just kept coming at them. And our offense, when they had their chances, they got after it, and, and it's a great way to start on the road. Week one to week two, is that enough improvement for you? You know, I think we did improve, and, and what we were really talking all week about was improving in the course of the game. Mm -hmm. And I think we got better from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, and that's even... That's even more exciting. Well, it's admirable in the tough Texas heat against the tough team that, that wears people down down the stretch. If you were told that you were going to be outrushed in this game, you probably wouldn't have liked the outcome. No, that's right. And, and the thing I mentioned in the post game a little bit was that you know, there'll be a lot of things that we're happy about. And I'm sure the, the rushing end of things, uh, we know we've got to get better there. Well, we go back to the friendly confines of the horseshoe against Cincinnati next week. And uh, back at home, it's nice on the road, nice and all that, but good to get back home again. Well, it really is, and we've got to do a great job. Uh, if we want to contend for the Big Ten title, and we're going to have to get better next weekend. Uh, you know, everyone's going to be patting us on the back and mm -hmm. saying we did a good job here. We have really got to dig in and become better against Cincinnati. All right, 2-0 for the Bucks, the number one ranked team winning a biggie on the road. We want you to join us next week on Buckeye Football Weekly. For head coach Jim Tressel, I'm Jeff Hogan. We'll see you then. Buckeye Football Weekly with Jim Tressel is brought Horns up for the first one versus two regular season matchup in a decade. Some Buckeyes called it a season-defining game. Their definition might set the order for the title race and a matchup steeped in tradition in South Bend where Notre Dame found its knockout punch. College football final. Say hey. to College Football Final, powered by Pontiac. Hope the line's protecting. That snap was slow again. <laughs> Opening kickoff, some stormy weather in the big house. It was just an omen for the early part of the day in the Big Ten. We'll show you what happened with Michigan and Central once they got back on the field. Under the roof, that didn't keep Iowa out of stormy weather. Why? Until you see how the Hawkeyes had to finish overtime against Syracuse. Weren't the only teams involved in OT. Some fantastic finishes in the ACC. A classic on Chestnut Hill and not so classic for NC State in Raleigh. Glad to have you with us on College Football Final, powered by Pontiac, alongside Lou Holtz, won himself a national championship. Mark May, a College Football Hall of Famer. I'm Reese Davis. Guys, what an epic matchup we were ready for. Ohio State and Texas. Antonio Pittman say we've got to go back to their house and take one like they did to us the year before. Mm -hmm, they did. Nice tough game. Nice physical game. It was a better game than I thought it would be, but we'll have to look at the highlights to find out just how much. It is all about building the drama. Mark me. Here come the Longhorns. The horns were up. The sweater vest was on. The Buckeyes were ready, but the horns were on the move. Colt McCoy, Billy Pittman stretching for the end zone. 
And the ball is knocked free, and Donald Washington's going the other way, Lou. Oh, it's just a big turnaround. All of a sudden, you're going in, and whoa, come on back. How about this play by James Laurinaitis, who filled in so well for Carpenter in the Fiesta Bowl last year and made a couple of huge plays for the Buckeyes. Now, he's the top-off man. The backside has to cut him off. They didn't on that play. It's a great hustling play by Ohio State's defense. And then Troy Smith would make the Longhorns pay, finding Anthony Gonzalez. Buckeyes up 7 to nothing. Second quarter, Texas driving big, third down and not. Oh, Colt McCoy got it right into Kisser. Flags fly. They called roughing the passer on this. I think this was a poor call. I think it's a good defensive play. Luke, helmet to helmet, Reese. Helmet. I, they... I think his face was up, Mark. That's a judge. It's there. a judgment call. It's a judgment call, and it doesn't matter what you think on the sideline. It's a penalty first down. Great throw here by Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. Pittman hangs on this time. He atones for the fumble. It's tied at seven. Ensuing Ohio State possession. 28 ticks left. This is what a veteran quarterback will do to you. Anthony Gonzalez, a speedy one. Eight catches, 142 yards for him. Both career highs. And then Smith up top to Ted Ginn. Even faster is Ted Ginn on the other side. A so nice you reception say. right over the top. Ted Ginn Jr. for the touchdown reception. Burned Aaron Ross. Buckeyes up 14-7. Ginn had five catches for 97 yards. And there is Laurinaitis again. Somebody wants a helmet sticker. Mm -hmm. But when a guy makes a play, a big play, whether it be Troy Smith, et cetera, it just gives great momentum to the entire football team. Not just on that play, just overall. And here goes Antonio Pittman barreling through the Texas defense. And Ohio State firmly in control. 24 to 7 and that would be the final and a little nugget of history the Buckeyes now 3 and 0 oh, all time in number one versus number two games. Ohio State impressive on the road Colt McCoy unable to muster enough offense for the Longhorns to knock off number one Ohio State but never fear you know in the last three one versus two meetings the loser of the game bounced back to win the national championship but in the meantime it's the Buckeyes at least here in the second Saturday in September who are in the BCS driver's seat Chris Fowler and the guys in Austin to witness it. All right guys thank you well one of the stories, and there are several great storylines for the Buckeyes here tonight, is that defense. There's a rare preseason number one that has to replace nine defensive starters, including great players like Hawk and Carpenter. But where do they keep finding these linebackers? Laurinaitis, the guy is all inked up. His dad was a pro wrestler, part of the wrestler. Road Warriors, responsible for two humongous turnovers in this game. Yeah, but I also think Ohio State's defensive staff did a good job, not only a strategy and scheme, but substitutions. They, as Kirk said in a pregame show, they were going to substitute guys a lot a move alternating alternate they never tired out and I thought that was one of the key of the game was the Buckeye defense was fresh at the end and I did a tremendous job against the Texas team Jim Tressel told me they were going to yeah. substitute 57 of the 70 guys in the first half to try to save themselves because of the heat and humidity I thought he was kidding but coach is right they just kept sending them back in yeah. wave after wave and I think that helped them but the difference in the game at the end of the day was Troy Smith and the decision making and the fact that the Ohio State offense of coaching staff has confidence in Troy Smith that doesn't matter the down and distance it doesn't matter where the ball is doesn't matter how much time's on the clock they continue to attack and that's the luxury in my opinion in college football uh, having a quarterback that can get you into situations where you're confident and I think as I said Vince Young was that guy in college football last year Troy Smith is one of the guys along with Brady Quinn this year in the sport yeah Vince Young responsible for 346 yards against Ohio State a year ago in the win. The entire Texas offense produces 20 fewer yards than that tonight. And one thing about one versus twos in September, keep in mind that the last four, none of the eight teams involved of them, even the winners, went on to win the national title. Now, Ohio State looks good. We don't know about Texas. We don't yeah. know how much, you know, this means in terms of Ohio State being unbeatable. We don't know about the Longhorn team at this point. Well, I think Texas is going to lose a couple more games because of the quarterback situation. Colt McCoy is a nice kid, and he did, we did a story about him saving somebody in a swimming, you know, across the lake. But uh, this is Texas football, and this is not a Texas quarterback. I'm not so sure they can beat a lot of good football teams with McCoy at quarterback. Well, it's early to say if I'm he's not the you. answer, but he's going to start to feel the heat. Coach, oh. you and I always talk about in college football mm. after you win a championship how tough it is to come back that same, that next year with the same urgency, that same determination mm. that we saw every week yeah. from Texas. We did not see that on display in this football game. Is that a sign of what, what's to I'm, come? I'm going to give it. Because they didn't have any leadership on the field tonight. Let me give you the stat. Two teams 
since in 27 years have repeated Nebraska and USC. That's all. Texas. That's why it's tough up here. Yeah. We didn't see the same intensity tonight. No. Well, if Vince Young can come back for his senior year, it might have been a different story in terms of repeating it. By the way, Texas held to single digits for the first time in nine years. Remember the last game? Route 66, UCLA beat him 66-3. Not as bad as that one, but certainly a deflator for the folks here in Austin tonight. The one versus two battle. Troy Smith and his receivers proved to be way too much. Ohio State roars past Texas 24-7. The whole game was a good game. You know, without the guys up front doing a great job, I think we only allowed one sack today, and that was huge. It was, it was them up front. Our kids kept playing, and they trained hard for this. We played against a very good football team. Mac and his staff do a great job. This was a great college football game. I'm sure the people watching had a treat. And the nation's longest winning streak at 21 in a row is over and it's not necessarily marked just because Vince Young wasn't there. I know he could have helped, but the quarterback play wasn't awful for Texas. It wasn't, and for Colt McCoy in his second start, I thought he looked awful good in this football game. He didn't get help with, with from his supporting cast. Wide receivers, running backs dropped a lot of balls in this football game. That could have been big plays for the Texas offense right here. Not a great job of protection, but he, flush, he gets flushed out, rolls to the right, throws the ball right in the hands of a wide receiver, drop. Those are plays at the Texas offense. They've got to help a young quarterback out. Here again, another throw right on the money. Hits him right in the chest. Selvin, you've got to catch that ball. Another time, good protection. Throwing the ball vertically right in wide receiver's hands. For a young quarterback like this in a big game atmosphere like this, the supporting cast, the offensive line, the running game, the wide receivers, they have to step up and help him. Colt McCoy didn't play that bad in this football game. When Mac Brown breaks down this game film, he's going to look at it and say, you guys got to help out this young quarterback. You know, that's been the entire theme of the offseason as well the quarterback's not going to win games for us the way Vince Young did Texas saying hey we just have to get Colt McCoy to put it in the hands of the skill guys and he did that to a large degree but it wasn't enough against a great Buckeye effort well the Ohio State defense started out having some problems as far as a matter of fact Texas went right down there and fumbled the football but Troy Smith provided the inspiration after Texas tied up 7-7 with maybe a minute and a half to go in the first half Troy Smith, the Legion football team, right down the field, gets up 14-7. And then, once James Garolitis intercepted the pass to set it up, as here you see this big one, he played a tremendous game. He caused a fumble on the five-yard line. He intercepted the pass. He had 13 tackles, 10 solos. But the main thing, the longer they went, then their confidence got better after that interception. And by the end of the game, Texas could have played for another quarter, and I don't think they would have scored maybe the tech of the Ohio State defense came of age because of the inspiration of Garolitis and Troy Smith. Yeah, Laurinaitis was an outstanding force in this game. Are you officially calling an end to the talk of the nine new starters on the Buckeye defense? Oh, yeah, absolutely, because now they earned their personality today. They earned their reputation, and their confidence will grow. The respect they have for their teammates, the confidence they have, that does nothing but grow, and that's where great teams are formed. And now Texas is going to have to turn the page and start looking ahead, perhaps a Big 12 showdown against Oklahoma coming up in just a few weeks. Of course, the headline game of the day, Ohio State and Texas and the Buckeyes put their stamp on the early part of the season by stamping out Texas 21 game winning streak. Ohio State a 24 seven victor. Chris Fowler and the guys were in Austin. Welcome back to Austin guys. We saw that classic psychology the sandwich game teams are euphoric after a big victory. Get another one next week. Oops forgot to play Tennessee Air Force barely survived Florida State and Troy in late pick to hold on and Iowa minus Drew Tate on the road at Syracuse a little more understandable you know Chris you know how it happens the coaches tell them all the time oh hey this is a good team but the players tell them get hurt in the fraternity house the cafeteria <laughs> don't worry about Air Force you got four the next week and I'm telling you it gets in your right? head and the coaches can't do anything about it and today there's too much parity you can't avoid teams and just act like you can just roll your jersey out and win each yeah. game and the thing I'm starting to see is the cream starting to rise we've been two or three weeks now starting to realize who the best teams are out there. Instead of reading our preseason magazines, now we have some substance, and we can really start to see who the teams are to yeah. beat in college football. Uh, some teams took care of business, though, psychologically. Florida, Auburn, yeah. LSU come to mind. Yeah. They have all big games next week. Give me the most impressive team. Ohio State, no, no, they're ineligible. That's a no-brainer. So besides the Buckeyes. Charlie Weiss, Brady Quinn, Notre Dame, all phases of the ball game. I'm telling you, that's a nice-looking football team. 
and I'm I'm got I'm a believer now. now I really am. I'm coming. I'm coming, right, I'm coming com till next week. And then, <laughs> but Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, yeah. obviously most impressive if you're avoid yeah. if you're going to eliminate Ohio State. Oh. Quarterback Brady Quinn able to get on track. The defense played well, and that's the thing that's different about this year's Notre Dame team. It's a team that can play and dominate on both sides of the ball, not just offense. They no longer have to keep the ball away from teams. Mm. They're playing very good defense. I dominated LSU in there. 14 oh, straight please. quarters, no touchdowns allowed, and Jamarcus Russell. Pretty sharp. Arizona's not a bad defensive football team. LSU yes. looks very, very good, good and call. ready for Auburn. Most disappointing performance today. If anybody can win the SEC title at South Carolina, it's Steve Spurrier. Not this year, next year, and few. No points against Georgia. No points yeah. can against I, Georgia. Can I apologize to the Georgia fans? That was an impressive effort Thank by their defense. They shut them down. I think Clemson, staying in the state of South Carolina, Clemson Tigers on the road. I know they're banged up on defense, but if Clemson wants to win the ACC, mm. you've got to be able to win that game. You got to kick an extra point. That's what you got to do in overtime. Yeah. All right. Most surprising performance. Air Force Academy. Congratulations. Most of all, going for two for the win against Tennessee. Absolutely, the road, yeah. against Tennessee. That he almost beat him, and he went for two. Why? Because we're developing leadership at the Air Force <laughs> Academy. You win. <laughs> I could not that's believe it. that score. When I saw that score, I couldn't it's believe true. that. It was gutsy. How about Akron going on the road against poor Chuck Amato at this point? Akron and Luke Getze driving the length of the field. Clock's mm. going down. They score the winning touchdown. Great effort there by the Zips and their head coach, J.D. Brookhart. And surprising on the other side for NC State. All right, pick, pick a game. Let's say Auburn LSU. That'll be your game to showcase for next week. I'm telling you, it's not a game for the faint-hearted. <laughs> There's going to be bodies flying over that place. If you don't have a ticket now, go out and steal one. This is one worth to see. I'm telling you, it's a great game There's, to see. This, this weekend coming up oh. is going to be the best weekend in college football until we get to the end of November. But I think the game is Tennessee and Florida. I think that's going to be a great game. We're going to find out how good Florida is, and we're going to see if Tennessee was actually looking ahead and are they ready to rebound after their performance today right. against Air Force. And you can pick against Notre Dame next week because Michigan's defense did a pretty good job against the Irish offense a year ago. And nobody ready. has I'm given the Wolverines you. a chance of going into yeah, South I'm Bend. Not no Nebraska at USC, any I'm shot? Yeah. 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 That'd be a good well, game. Who knows? Who knows? Showdown fun Saturday stuff. should be should be a lot of fun for everybody. One of the better weekends in September in any memories. This is the ESPNU All-State Standings Review. All right, guys, I guess the issue here, how far does Texas fall in the standings? I think they fall probably as low as seven, maybe eight. I don't think they fall out of the top ten. What do you think, Luke? I think they fall to ninth. I think that they're going to fall behind LSU, Florida, West Virginia, etc. Can't fall behind Florida State, though. No way. Not after not after that performance. Michigan and Notre Dame. All